Welcome to Senior Men's Soccer from Queens Athletic Field on TV7, your community sports channel. Tonight's game is the final of the Dieter Ellisat tournament between Elliott Lake United and Pat Mario's. The officials for tonight's game are Mr. Pietro D'Angelo, the referee, Mr. Tony Gallich, and Mr. Ignacio Spadafora handling the lines. I'm Bob Segsworth, and I'll be handling play-by-play. And uh, with me is uh, to provide his, his expertise is Joey Presta. Welcome, Joey. Thanks, Bob. How are you? I'm, I'm just fine. A little cold, and I'm sure the players are a little, quite a bit colder right now. But uh, as the action heats up, that'll take care of itself. I was wondering, this is a, the concluding tournament of the year, Joey, and perhaps uh, you were a friend of uh, Dieter Alisad. Perhaps you can tell us a little bit about him and how this tournament came to be. Well, uh, D Dieter was a very uh, avid follower of soccer. His uh, father was involved with the old... German Olympia team, Black Devils at that time, then Dieter became involved with uh, the Olympia team, uh, Sudbury United, and, uh, but uh, what was great about Dieter is he, that he loved soccer in general, and it didn't matter if uh, he was a Sudbury United person, if uh, it was a good game, he pulled for the uh, for, for soccer. He was a soccer man, and uh, unfortunately he passed away in 1976, and uh, as a tribute to him, uh, the executive of the Sub United team that year uh, asked if we could maybe have a tournament sponsored in his name, and this is how it came about. Play is just underway. Kanji for Elliott Lake United. Into touch, and we'll have a Pat Mario throw in. Cesar Pacito leaves it for Rob Scarcelloni. Scarcelloni throw in to Frank Anselmo. Anselmo through midfield. Plays it back to Paladino. Paladino looking for Joe Hamer, the playing coach of Pat Mario's on the near wing. Joe Hamer looking for support. Challenge there. Coming forward is number 15, Bourdon. Challenge to Paladino. Bourdon once again. The stopper, Mario D'Agostino, is there. Appears to have been injured slightly. Play continues. D'Agostino is down, but play is still underway. Pushed forward. Duhame looking for Brown but into touch and the referee has halted play as uh, Dr. Don Pearsall the trainer of Pat Mario's goes out to uh, check on the condition of Mario D'Agostino we can only hope that it's nothing serial, serious uh, Mario was the MVP of the senior men's league last year excellent player and Joey I know that you brought him up a couple of times with Sudbury United uh, last year in the OSL and he played well for you. Yeah definitely Mario's an excellent excellent player he plays stopper does the job super well he's a uh, hundred percent uh, out there when he comes out there you know he's, he's there to play I think Bob he, he must have got something in the eye there when he went up for that ball. Well that's the second uh, potential eye injury because or eye injury because in a previous game we lost uh, Renato Nicolucci from Pat Mario's uh, quite a serious uh, eye injury and uh, Renato is on the bench but he's not dressed and he won't be playing and they're bringing uh, Mario off the field he looks a little unsteady and uh, Roy Fabiani will be going in uh, in place of uh, Mario D'Agostino so it looks maybe that he uh, he got hit hard in the uh, in the nose area Bob and he's a little uh, drowsy right now or drowsy and uh, you know, I guess they'll give him a few minutes to get his senses back it's into touch once again as play resumes. Rob McTaggart, the sweeper for Pat Mario, is coming forward to take this throw in. Looking for a target. Looking for, is it in Rubai, another player from the Sub United roster of last year. Playing for Pat Mario's this year once again. To Pachito, Pachito. To McTaggart, McTaggart into the middle. Looking for Hamer. Hamer gets ahead to it. Challenging there, but Paparo is off his line quickly for Elliott Lake United and gathers it in. Nick Paparo, very talented young keeper, playing for Laurentian University this year as well as finishing out the season with, with Elliott Lake. Done an excellent job all season for his team and we're hoping that if conditions will improve in Elliott Lake that we can look forward to Elliott Lake in the league again next year. 
Cross in the middle by Elliott Lake. Mike Brown moving up. Brown on the near wing, looking to make the cross. Hamer challenges, and it'll be a corner kick awarded to Elliott Lake United. Elliott Lake uh, putting some pressure on in the early stages, Joe. Yeah, Elliott Lake seems to be a little bit more fired up right now, Bob, but uh, that, that's the usual way of uh, Pat and Mario's. They come out, and they like to push the ball around and just get the feel of it. Uh, it and Elliott Lake has just come out now and just are uh, pressuring them. C.J. Hame is on the keeper. Into the middle, and an infraction indicated by the referee. And we'll have a free kick awarded to Pat Mario's. Quickly taken by a sweeper, McTaggart. Long ball. Frank Anselmo coming forward. Anselmo on a break, has a chance. And an excellent save by keeper Nick Paparo for Elliott Lake United. Anselmo, a clear break there and a chance to score for Pat Mario's. Couldn't, couldn't finish, and it's into touch. And it looks like an Elliott Lake throw in. And Frank is uh, usually uh, playing uh, on defense. Uh, he, he tried to pick that far corner, and Paparo just uh, knocked it off there with his leg. Nice save. It's Pat Maris with a throw in. The referee's indicated an infraction, and we'll have a free kick awarded to Elliott Lake. Paparo positioning the ball. In uh, previous meetings between these uh, two teams early in the season and later uh, towards the end of the season, close encounters. One or two goals difference at most, but Pat Marios has been successful all season long against Elliott Lake, who play, who traditionally played an English style, uh, quick kick and run, speedy wingers. Uh, Pat Marios prefers, I think, uh, more of a ball control style and uh, slower buildup. Oh yes, definitely, Bob. Pat and Marios is a very nice technical team. They move the ball around well. Uh, there's an awful lot of experience out there for them, Bob. An awful lot. Some of these players have been playing for a long time. Once again, Anselmo coming forward, chips it into the middle, cleared there. Danny Palladino chested down, cleared once again. O'Neill to Kanji, Kanji for Elliott Lake coming forward, but Pacito gets to it. Instruction indicated by the referee, Mr. Pietro D'Angelo, and we'll have a free kick awarded to Pat Mario. This looks like a direct kick, quickly taken, Cesar Pacito, long shot. Wide of the, key of the net, but Paparo was there to keep it in play. Picks it up and plays it out to Jaheim. Back to Paparo. We can expect a long clearance here. Dino Cacciati in the touch and an Elliott Lake throw in. Moving forward is uh, Hammond. Elliott Lake, but DiGiacomo uh, Antonio is there, plays it back to his keeper, Marino Scarcelloni. Scarcelloni picks it up, challenged there by Andrew O'Neill. Then we'll look for a long clearance. Looking for Rubai, but it's in, put into touch by number two, Hammond once again, for Elliott Lake, and Dino Cacciotti with the throw in for Marino DiGiacomo Antonio. DiGiacomo Antonio. For Paladino to Frank Anselmo. Back to Dave Jack Antonio. Head for Rubai, but cut out nicely by Elliott Lake. Dino Cacciati. Challenge coming forward. Maintains possession. Plays it back for Rab McTaggart. McTaggart beats his man. Coming forward for Paladino. Pushes it through. Number four, Mike Brown is there. Challenge once again. And that's number seven, Robertson. Pushing it forward. Roy Fabiani into touch. And we'll have an Elliott Lake throw in. Pat Mario's, Pat Mario's pushing the ball around really nice right now. And uh, they're frustrating the uh, Elliott Lake the, uh, runners. They're just running towards the ball. And the ball is being moved really nicely by the Pat Mario team, Bob. Playing on the wing to Rubai. Rubai challenge. Beats his man. Rubai coming forward. He's got support. On the far wing, Rubai looking for the cross. Can't make it, goes down, and the referee indicates a free kick. On a challenge there, I believe, by uh, Brad Duhem. And we'll have a free kick awarded to Pat and Mario's in a dangerous area just outside the uh, the penalty area. Yes, and this is dangerous because Pat and Mario has a lot of height, and uh, you look for Frank and Zalmo in there, and uh, I see Joe's out here, and... Uh, is that Rob Scarcelloni? A lot of height out there, so these are dangerous uh, free kicks here. The referee making certain of the placement is an indirect free kick. So it has to touch another player other than the person taking the shot. But Paparo off his line quickly, gathers it in. No serious danger. The referee's indicating that uh, he wants to provide the keeper with an opportunity to clear the ball. Then having a little chat with Rubai. 
Paparo directing traffic. Two to Hain back to Paparo. We can expect him to pick it up, and make the clearance. Long clearance. Scarcelloni gets ahead to it. Kanji. De Jacob Antonio. Long ball. Duhame is back. With a head, looking for someone on the wing. Kanji is there. And an infraction indicated by the referee. And we'll have another free kick. We've played about nine minutes in the first half. No score at this stage in this Dieter Alistad final game between Elliott Lake United and Pat Mariotis. Duhame getting the ball in the proper position for this free kick. Plays it forward to number 13, that's Baratti. Baratti off. Cesar Pacito into touch, and we'll have an Elliott Lake throw in. It's Baratti for Elliott Lake, taking the throw in. Elliott Lake pushing a number of players forward. O'Neill gets ahead to it, but it's over the goal there, and we'll have a goal kick awarded to Pat Mariels. One of the unfortunate things, I think, Joe, uh, or, uh, Joey, this, this year has been that uh, with the layoffs in Elliott Lake, the future of the club and the team is certainly in jeopardy and in question. And it's, it was a marvelous addition to the league this year to have an, a, a new team and, and I think a very good and very solid team um, added. And uh, we can only hope that community the best and that they'll be able to keep soccer going next year and hopefully we'll have Elliott Lake United back in the league again. Well, they, they definitely have added another dimension to the league, Rob. Whenever you can get a team from out of town, it's it's nice. It's nice for the players and uh, this team, uh, I think they finished second in the league and they play they play good soccer. It might even be nice to get teams from North Bay and uh, other northern Ontario cities maybe. Well, with the uh, long clearance by Cacciotti there into Paparo's hands, no problem with Paparo with the clearance. Down the middle once again. Scarcelloni to Pacito. Pacito loses possession. Challenged by Baratti, but regains possession. Looking for Rubai. Rubai was looking for Anselmo there, but it was cut out. Baratti once again being challenged. Di Giacomo Antonio for Pat Marios to Anselmo. Anselmo looking for Rubai. Duhem is there. Puts the ball into touch on the far side. Then we'll have a Pat Mario's throw in. But some good uh, one touch soccer there, Joe. Yes, yes, excellent. Yeah. You, you'll get a lot of that from uh, Isidin Rubai and uh, Frank Anselmo. They really know what they're doing out there. They know where they're going and they read the game really well. And Cesar Pacito has a lot of experience at that, too. Yeah, and the long throw in taken by Rob McTaggart. And Selmo's up, gets ahead to it. Paparo gathers it in, throws it out in the near wing, looking for number 15. That's Boudzon, Boudzon coming forward. Challenged. Cacciotti comes back to fill in the sweeper. Boudin chips it forward. O'Neill's running onto it, but Scarcelloni, Marino Scarcelloni, the keeper for Pat Miros, gathers it in and throws it out to Rob McTaggart. McTaggart, challenged by Kanji, clears the ball forward. Mike Brown gathers it in. Pacito is there, but Taco coming forward. O'Neill tries to turn it back in, and it's played back by Cesar Pacito, who came back from his midfield position to push it back to keeper Marino Scarcelloni, and once again, we'll have a long clearance by the Pat Mario's keeper. Duhame trying to get ahead to it, misjudges it, and it's Hammond, who finally puts it into touch, and we'll have a Pat Mario's throw in in the Elliot Lake zone. Interesting to note, Bob, I think that Pat Mario's right now is uh, is using a 4-4-2 formation, which uh, kind of suits their style. Unfortunately for uh, a 4-4-2 formation, this field might be a little narrow. That might hamper their, uh, their play, but uh, right now it seems to be working really well. Elliot Lake, on the other hand, is using the 4-3-3. Uh, and Hamer was moving in there, but it was cleared away safely into touch by Elliott Lake, and once again, we'll have a Pat Mario's throw-in in the Elliott Lake zone. This time it'll be playing coach Joe Hammer to take the throw-in. And another throw-in once again. 
But Taggart coming forward. Uh, looks like Rob's going to try and take this. And Rob McTaggart is capable of throwing this ball right into the penalty area, the goal area. And an opportunity there for a, for a header. It's almost as good as a corner kick. Definitely. Another dimension that's been added to the game in the recent years is this long throw. Players have gotten better at it, and uh, it's, almost, it's like a corner kick. Here we go, looking for Anselmo. He flicks it forward. Di Antonio gets ahead to it. Pacito by an infraction indicated, I believe, a handball by the referee, and we'll have a free kick awarded to Elliott Lake United. Whenever you can get the ball into that uh, penalty area, Bob, it creates havoc for the defense. It's a danger area. And uh, long throw or corner kick, uh, any way you can get it in there. Danny Palladino plays it back to Marino Di Giacomo Antonio. Di Giacomo Antonio back to Palladino. Palladino pushing it through for Anselmo, but number seven he is there. Robertson plays it back to his keeper. And once again, Nick Caparo with the clearance in the middle. Rob Scarcelloni gets ahead to it. And we have a clearance. Challenge there by Sam Kanji. Whistled down by the referee. Rob McTaggart with the free kick for Pat Marios. Looking for Palladino, who's made a run. Robertson beats him to the ball. Frank Anselmo's there to Marino Di Giacomo Antonio playing it out to the wing for Cesar Pacito. Lovely ball. Pacito to Rubai. Rubai with some space. Being challenged by Hammond. Beats Hammond. Next across. Paparo off his line once again. Quickly gathers it up. Good goalkeeping by yes. Paparo once again. Yes. Very good. Is it might have done better to get that ball a little further away from him, but uh, goalie came out well. He's a strong player. Strong player. Rob McTaggart, challenged by Baratti, plays it back to his keeper, Marino Scarcelloni, with Andrew O'Neill. Challenging for that ball, and we'll have a long clearance once again. Scarcelloni, up and under, Mike Brown gets to it. Pacito for Pat Marios to Hamer. Hamer heads it for Anselmo. Well read by Elliott Lake. O'Neill, chest it down, it's control of the ball. Moving towards the near sideline, being challenged by Pacito. And Elliott Lake put the ball into touch on the far side, and we'll have a Pat Marios throw in. Dino Cacciotti there to take the throw in for Pat Marios. See Mario D'Agostino on the bench seems to be uh, still rubbing his nose a bit. Must be a little tender. We should see him out there in a little while. Mike Brown. With the ball being challenged by Joe Hamer. It's in the touch. I believe it's a Pat Mario's throw and indicated by the linesman, Ignacio Spadafora. Nice Scottish name, eh, Bob? Yeah. Come back, come back, come back. Max Spadafora. Yeah. <laughs> Hamer looking for someone in the middle. No one there except Elliot Lake. Pushing the ball forward, being challenged. Brown tries to beat Hamer, plays it back to Robertson. Baratti, Baratti's moved over to this side. And Stocko for Elliott Lake, chipping it forward. Played back in the midfield. Rubai is there for Joe Hamer. Hamer gets control, plays it into the middle. Fabiani gets a touch to it to Jack Antonio. But Brown for Elliott Lake, being challenged from behind, pushes the ball forward. O'Neill tries to maintain control. O'Neill in midfield, but DeJack Antonio gets a foot to it. Race in the far wing, Duhame and Rubai. Cacciati there. Challenging with Sam Kanji. Kanji for Elliott Lake, plays it out of the middle, but no one there. Cleared forward. And lovely control exercised by Rubai, but Rubai runs into trouble. Kanji takes the ball away from him. Out into the center of the penalty area. But Taggart is there. But Taggart once again coming forward. Has time, plays it for Anselmo. Frank Anselmo. 
for Cacciati, it appeared, but Kanji's got a break. And some support in the box. Fabian, and he gets back and clears it to DiGiacomantonio. Some errors there by Pat Marios could have been costly, Joey. Yes, maybe they're taking it a little too easy back there, pushing the ball around. Rubai to DiGiacomantonio as Taco is challenging. To Pacito. Pacito plays it back to Cacciati. To Jack Antonio. Long ball looking for Rubai. Nobody there, and it'll be in the touch and an Elliott Lake throw in. It's fine to push the ball around, Bob, but when you push it back to a defenseman, you should make sure that you're not putting him in any real pressure situation. Just give it back to him when he has the time and room to maneuver. Otherwise, you could get your team into real problems. And I see the linesman on the far side, uh, Mr. Gallich, has asked the spectator or two to move back so that he can have a clear view of the line to make his calls. D. Jack Antonio switching the play to the near wing, but Robertson gets ahead to it. Taco. Challenged by Palladino, coming forward. Roy Fabiani is there for Pat Mario to DiGiacomo Antonio. DiGiacomo Antonio for Anselmo. And Mike Brown plays it back to his keeper. Right away, Joe. Right away, Joe. Nick Paparo. With the clearance. Everything seems to be down the middle on the clearances. And push forward. Here's Andrew O'Neill with an opportunity. And Marino Scarcelloni gets a hand to it. And that's a good scoring opportunity for Elliott Lake. Fortunately, with the hard field, it's difficult to control the ball, Joey. It's difficult to control the ball if he had gotten a foot on it. But Marino had to react pretty quick to that, and he did. Played out to Mike Brown for Elliott Lake. Moving into midfield. Playing it for Taco. Taco coming forward. Being challenged. Fabiani is there. Plays it for Palladino. Palladino to Pacito. Pacito to Giacomo Antonio to Palladino. Triangle set up. For Rubai. Dino Cacciotti is overlapping from his fullback position on the far wing. Into the middle for Palladino. Palladino maintaining control. Lays it back. The Jack Mantoni with a shot, but a little high and over the net. But a good build up there. Yes, excellent build up and a very smart play on uh, Danny uh, Palladino's part. He saw that uh, he couldn't go forward anymore and just laid it back for a good shot by Marino. Substitutions for Pat and Mario's. It's uh, Mario D'Agostino going back in, resuming his uh, stopper position. And it's number 16, Rossetto, and number 9, Angelo Taco going in for. Elliott Lake United as uh, Sam Conji and Hammond take a break. With the goal kick, Mario D'Agostino. Clearance by Rob Scarcelloni looking for Hamer. And the ball's in the touch, and we'll have an Elliott Lake throw in. Mike Brown. Plays it right into the middle. Baratti, Frank Baratti, pushing it forward. He's looking for number 16. That's Rosetto who just came in. And an infraction indicated by the linesman, and we'll have a free kick awarded to Pat Mario. Yes, uh, unfortunately, uh, you can't go through players to get to the ball. <laughs> Frequently, that leads to controversy regarding things like obstruction and, uh, and so on, and can lead to some pushing and shoving as well. Well, uh, this year, Bob, uh, at the referees uh, clinics that I've attended, uh, they mentioned this uh, from behind thing. They really uh, strict on this from behind thing. And uh, that was a little bit from behind, so definite call. Cleared in by Joe Hamer. Nobody there to run onto it. Paparo off his line with the clearance on the near wing. Robertson. With some space. Cacciati has moved over to this side. Plays it forward to DiGiacomo Antonio. To Palladino. Several players forward. Good ball through. Paparo is there. It's off Paparo. And it looks like the linesman's pointing to a corner kick for Pat Marios. Once again, a good throw ball. No, it looks like a throw in. 
A good through ball by uh, Pat Mario is an opportunity for Anselmo and the keeper off his line doing his job very well. Exactly. That looks like that's going to be a, a thing to see in this game, Anselmo and the keeper. Back to Anselmo. Looking for the cross. Can't make it. Elliot Lake comes forward. Jack Antonio gets there. Elliot Lake with control. Robertson. Cacciati is there. Plays a dummy there by Palladino. Gets through to D'Agostino, but Elliot Lake with the long clearance. Rob Scarcelloni gets ahead to it. Mike Brown for Elliot Lake. Into the middle to Andrew O'Neill. Good ball to Rossetto. Rossetto being challenged. Pat Mario's are back, and it's cleared on the far wing to Isidin Rubai. Rubai switching the play to Joe Hamer. Hamer into the middle. Rob Scarcelloni comes forward. Play's getting a little ragged in midfield, and an infraction indicated. Challenge from behind. There he saw it again, Bob. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a real tough challenge, but it was from behind. And Robertson to take this free kick for Elliott Lake. Ball in the Pat Mario's area, cleared high. Mike Brown gets ahead to it, challenges. And an infraction indicated by the referee, and we'll have a free kick awarded to Pat and Mario's. We're about 25 minutes into the first half of this Peter Alisad tournament final between Elliott Lake United and Pat and Mario's. So far, some good scoring opportunities, but none in the back of the net, so it's 0-0 at this stage of the game. As Anselmo comes forward, being challenged, and Baratti plays it back to his keeper, Nick Paparo. Yeah, that is a huge net out there, Bob, but it sure gets small sometimes in the game. <laughs> Paparo taking his time, allowing his players to move forward, and we'll be looking for the clearance once again. Mary D'Agostino, Robertson gets ahead to it. Mike Brown controls in midfield for Elliott Lake. Robertson coming forward from his fullback position, has space, moving forward, looking for some support. Good ball into the middle to tackle. McTaggart clears, but Baratti is there for Elliott Lake, plays it on the wing. Rob Scarcelloni challenged by tackle once again. Clears it down the wing. And it's into touch off number nine, Angelo Taco, and we'll have a throw in taken by Is it in Rubai looking for Angelo Frank, excuse me, Frank Anselmo. Anselmo comes forward with the ball. Three against one, lays it back to Rubai. And we have uh, an infraction indicated by the referee. I'm assuming he's awarding a free kick to. Uh, to Pat Mario's, it's a two-man free kick, indirect free kick from uh, where he's standing there. See the arm up. I gather that the referee decided that the infraction was sufficiently serious that he had to blow it because certainly Pat Mario's had control of the ball and he could have played the advantage there if he wanted to, Joe. Yeah, well, the advantage, you have to kind of make up your mind in a split second and uh, he might have been a touch quick on the whistle, but... Well, I think it's if he feels the infraction is serious enough, you want to make sure that the player knows he can't get away with that kind of stuff yeah. and that way the referee maintains control of the game and that's important. Exactly. Yeah. Off the wall. On this free kick and... Baratti pushes the ball forward, but is it in Rubai is there for Pat Mario's Rubai maintaining control, looking for support. Back heels it to Scarcelloni. Scarcelloni pushing, looking for Pacito. But it's Elliot Lake coming forward. Andrew O'Neill beats his man, pushes it forward. McTaggart with control from his sweeper position. And the field does him in on that one as the ball was bouncing all over the place. Rubai looking for Pacito. But we have uh, Frank Anselmo down. Player down. Referee stopped play. Anselmo limping. But it looks as if it isn't too serious, and I guess we'll have a restart with the drop ball. Some of the fans detecting a little bit of uh, the problem of aluminum seats on a cold night and complaining about it. And uh, this is the way the uh, the game is restarted. Uh, when play is stopped for things like an injury, it's a drop ball. Pat Mario's, Joe Hamer, cleared by Elliot Lake. Garcelloni gets a foot to it, but it's O'Neill. 
Back to Mike Brown into the middle. Opportunity here, but Rob McTaggart plays it back to his keeper very coolly. And it's thrown out to Joe Hamer. Hamer looking for support into the middle for Jack Antonio. Gets a foot to it. And it's Anselmo. Pat Mario's coming forward. Pacito. That midfield tries to beat his man. Anselmo plays it back. And it's Taco coming forward. Taco on the far wing, lots of speed. Looking for some support in the middle for the cross. Lays it back. Frank Baratti, one of their better players, miss hits it. Pacito chests that ball down, maintains control, beats his man. Challenge in the middle. Brown and Pacito, and it's into touch. And a Pat Mario's throw in. 50-50 ball, no call by the official. No call, both players were determined to get it too. Little push in the back on Frank Anselmo by Mr. Duhame, and we'll have a free kick awarded to Pat Mario's at the midfield area. It seems to me that what, what's happened now, Bob, is that the uh, Pat and Mario midfielders, there's a few of them that maybe are not picking up their checks on uh, on defense, and uh, when, you, when you outnumber the opposition in midfield, it shouldn't happen. Elliott Lake is getting a little too much freedom in that midfield, and they shouldn't be getting that. Long clearance. McTaggart is there for Pat Mario's controls. To Pacito on the far wing. Cesar Pacito plays the ball in the middle, looking for Anselmo, challenging from behind. Mike Brown. Rubai. Rubai is there. Pacito comes forward. Pacito for Pat Mario's. At midfield, challenged by Brown. DiGiacomo Antonio for Pat Mario's. For Rubai. Rubai maintaining possession. To Scarcelloni. For Frank Anselmo on the far wing. Anselmo looking for some support in the penalty area. And once again, an infraction indicated as Anselmo was down. It looks like he got caught from behind the, on the ankle or the back of the heel. Yeah, it looks like that's what happened there, Bob. And we'll have a Pat Mario's free kick just outside the penalty area. Again, another good opportunity. I see Mario D'Agostino coming forward. Joe Hamer's up there, Frank. And Selmo. So there's some height. Cesar Pacito to take this cross. It'll be swinging away from the keeper because Pacito's left footed. Hammer's there on the edge of the box. Elliott Lake trying to push its guys forward so that they'll have the offside trap working effectively, but they manage to clear. And Cacciotti cuts the ball out. Back into the middle, looking for Palladino. Taco. Time and space, challenged by two players. And DiGiacomo Antonio to Hamer. In for Palladino. Frank Baratti is there. Baratti challenged by Mario D'Agostino. It's put into touch, and we'll have a Pat Mario's throw in. With about 14 minutes left in this first half, it's Elliott Lake no score, Pat Mario's no score in the Dieter Alisad tournament final. This is the last game of the season, Joe, in uh, senior men's soccer. And it's it's fitting that it that it's involves a tribute to uh, an individual such as uh, Dieter. Well, uh, for the people that knew Dieter, uh, they know what he was all about, Bob. And I was fortunate; he was a very good friend of mine. And uh, it is it is a great tribute. And Salvo in the box, chance here. Brown clears. Cacciotti with control into the box, looking for some support, but. Nick Paparo off his line, took about 12 steps in the clearance. Come on, Steve, look for the ball. Come on, Steve. Rob Scarcelloni, DiGiacomo Antonio looking for Mario D'Agostino, but Elliott Lake coming forward once again, looking for O'Neill. Cacciotti is there. Marino, DiGiacomo Antonio with some time. But to Mike Brown for Elliott Lake, to Baratti. Baratti in midfield, being challenged, beats his man. Beats two players. Braddy coming forward, trying to make the cross. Once again, shot. Taggart gets behind it, and it's over the goal line. Lots of determination by Frank Braddy there, and it ended up with an opportunity of a shot on goal. Didn't get through to the goal area, and will have a goal kick. Yes, that. Uh, but I still can't understand why the two players were free in the midfield. I think uh, Coach Joe uh, should do a little bit of talking to the boys there at halftime. 
Well, we've had another change. It looks like uh, the playing coach of Elliott Lake United, uh, Bunkinen, is on, and Mike Brown is taking his seat. An infraction indicated by the linesman on the throw-in, and we'll have a Pat Mario's throw-in on the far side. One of the difficulties that Elliott Lake has had is that uh, with the shutdown, or I should say the layoffs in Elliott Lake, is that their, their coach, Ken Manuel, um, has, uh, has left the country, I understand, for a, for a period of time. And so the players have really had to get together and agree and um, find some, some, some new players. Because they lost a number and had to decide who was going to handle the coaching chores. And I gather it's uh, Elvin Punkin and he's been doing it. And he's been doing a good job, obviously, because they've won, uh, they've made it this far uh, against some very good opposition, including the Italian Flyers. Well, I, I think I've said it in previous telecasts that uh, Punkin is a Sudbury boy, and I know that uh, he's been involved in soccer uh, for quite a while, so he knows his stuff, and uh, they seem to be playing really well right now, so obviously he's doing a good job. Had an infraction indicated once again. I believe it may have been a handball or oh, perhaps a foot too high, but in any event, it's a Pat Mario's free kick. To be taken by Rob McTaggart. Looking for, is it in Rubai? Rubai on the far wing, challenging there. It's in, put into touch by number nine. It's Angelo Taco, and we'll have a Pat Mario's throw in. Taken by, it appears, Cesar Pacito. Plays it back to Rob Scarcelloni with time. Controls it, looking for Palladino. Palladino chips it, going in. Paparo off his line. And clears the ball. Mario D'Agostino gets ahead to it. O'Neill does it down, control, turns, and De Jacob Antonio is there but gives it away. Frank Baratti coming forward. Elliot Lake, seven or eight players up. Baratti playing it on the far wing, on the near wing, excuse me, but unfortunately for Elliot Lake, Bouton couldn't run onto that ball. It was a little bit too powerful. Over the goal line, and we'll have a goal kick awarded to Pat Murray. But certainly the uh, Pat Mario seemed to have the edge in the first 15 or 20 minutes of the game, but uh, Elliot Lake has certainly come back in the last 15 minutes or so, uh, Joe, and, and, and has had more more of the play and certainly more of the uh, offensive opportunities. Yes, that seems to be what the uh, what is happening out there, Rob. And, uh, you know, I really think that you'll see Pat Mario's come out and uh, really control things in the second half. Like I said before, there's a lot of experience in soccer out there. O'Neill with the cross into the middle. Keeper Scarcelloni is there, gathers it in without any difficulty. Although Rosetta was trying to get ahead to it and it clears it to Frank Anselmo. Anselmo tries to get a touch to it. Rubai coming back, being challenged. Baratti on the far wing for Elliott Lake. Too far for him into touch and we'll have a Pat Mario's throw in. Rob Scarcel only taking the throw in for Pat Mario's. Looking for Rubai. A little pushing from behind, and we'll have a free kick awarded to Pat Mario's. Cesar Pacito checking to see who's moving into the box, who's making a run. A little far, but the uh, keeper was out by the 10 yard penalty spot to pull that ball down as it's headed forward. Ratty once again, pushing the ball through, looking for Rosetto. Rosetto on the far wing, into the box. O'Neill goes up, and Scarcelloni pulls it down for Pat Mario. Well, it's two or three times now that the uh, Pat Mario uh, fullback has been caught uh, uh, moving up uh, and uh, left Rob McTaggart alone there. He was coming down three on two, actually. Uh, good save there by Scarcelloni. Of course, uh, high balls, the goalie can reach for them. Uh, he's, got, he's got the advantage of the extra two feet of his arms, and Scarcelloni's not a small man, so. Scarcelloni with the clearance, looking for Hamer on the near side. Hamer gets ahead to it off Bunkinen. Bunkinen keeps the ball in play. Challenged by Hamer, in the touch, and we'll have a Pat and Mario's throw in. 
see Pumpkin and he's wearing a uh, knee band there. He seems to be a little bit on the limp, so he might be nursing an injury also, I think. Well, I suspect at this time of the season, Joe, that quite a few of the players uh, have a few little knocks and bumps. Exactly. And one of the things that doesn't help is that this field, uh, there are lots of divots and so on, and you can easily to twist an ankle or a knee. Uh, fortunately, uh, we can't attribute, I don't think, any serious uh, injuries or accidents to it, but Paladino stepped on the ball there, fell down, and Sally Lake coming forward. Ferrati into the middle. O'Neill with the shot, off the post, and cleared by Cacciotti. What an excellent shot by Andrew O'Neill. Well, good second effort by him to get that ball. And we'll have a corner kick to Elliott Lake United as they bring players forward. And they, they put a man on the keeper, which I think is a wise move. But Scarcelli was able to see that cross, moved out, gathered it in, and clearance. A little awkward there by Angelo Taco. Puts it into touch, and we'll have a Pat and Mario's throw in. We have about six minutes left in this first half, plus perhaps a bit of injury time. And still no score. Certainly the closest to the scoring opportunity was just a second ago off the post on that shot by Andrew O'Neill. Goaltender's best friend, goal post. And once again, it's into touch. Pat Mario's throw in. Let's go forward. Waiting for play to get underway. Bob Scarcelloni to take the throw in for Pat Marion's. Pacito making a run. Into touch once again. And another Pat Marion's throw in. This time a little closer to the penalty area. Looking for Frank Anselmo. Turns. Goodbye. Controlling the ball. Being challenged. Pacito tries to keep control. Scarcelloni gets to it. Cleared out, Scarcelloni once again. Hamer back into the middle. Paladino coming forward. And I believe that's Baratti who come well back to cover for Elliott Lake. It's Taco challenged by McTaggart. McTaggart moved up from the sweeper position, gets control of the ball, plays it to Hamer. Hamer looking for Pacito or Rubai. Rubai gets to it on the far wing. And plays it off an Elliott Lake player, and so we'll have a Pat Mario's throw in on the far side. One thing that Isidin does really well, Bob, is protect the ball. I guess when you're his size, you have to learn that pretty fast. <laughs> well, and I gather that he was telling me that in, uh, in Libya, which is where he's from, they play very much a technical kind of soccer, and so individual skills are very much prized. Uh, the physical side of the game is, is not is certainly not his strong suit. Here's an opportunity for him. And the referee has indicated an infraction. I didn't quite see what it was, but good scoring opportunity for Pat and Mario's there as Rubai got a hold of that ball. I'm not sure what he called there. I didn't see the linesman's flag up, but he might have called an offside. The referee can call an offside if he sees it. Uh, he doesn't have to rely solely on the linesman. Long goal kick. Cacciotti is there. Cacciotti plays it back to his keeper. Scarcelloni switching the play to his brother Robert. He's challenged quickly. Pacito comes back, plays it back to his keeper. Marino Scarcelloni taking his time when his players move forward. And we'll have a long clearance here by Pat Marios. Paladino couldn't get his head to it. Taco for Elliott Lake with the ball. Taco looking for the long ball in the near wing. Mario D'Agostino gets a foot to it, puts it into touch, and we'll have an Elliott Lake throw in. Robertson for Elliott Lake with the throw in. 
It's in the touch, and Pat Mario's will get play underway with a throw, with a throw in. Poor Palladino, challenge right away, and a whistle against Bourdon, and we'll have a free kick taken quickly, looking for Rubai. Luhem is there. Taco and Di Antonio challenging for the ball. Cheeto gets to it, to Rubai. On the far wing, being challenged by Angelo Taco. It's in the touch, and we have a Pat Mario's throw in on the far side. We're in about the last two minutes of the first half. Number of good scoring opportunities uh, this far, thus far, Joe, but uh, none of them have gone in the back of the net. No, uh, two, uh, two excellent opportunities by either team, Bob, and uh, uh, we're going to see a good second half, I think. Pat Mario's is a very patient team. They'll wait their chances, but uh, hopefully they won't get caught moving up before uh, they pop one in, because that could change the pace of the game. Elliot Lake with the free kick. Looking down into the middle of the field. D'Agostino gets ahead to it. And Robertson's come up from his fullback position. Andrew O'Neill for Elliot Lake. Cross into the middle. And I believe that's Rosetto. Couldn't get ahead to it. And the ball goes over the goal line. And we'll have a goal kick awarded to Pat Mario. Played out to the keeper. He's outside his area. Brings it back in. Picks up the ball. Clears it the way the referee has indicated. Uh, an infraction against uh, one of the Elliott Lake players for making that challenge on, on the keeper. Yeah, it was brought to his attention by the linesman. The linesman put his flag up. Uh, the linesman was the closest player uh, official to the infraction, so he brought the referee's attention to it. So the result is that we'll have a Pat Mario's free kick. Taggart back to his keeper, Reno Scarcelloni. And we'll have the long clearance once again as the first half comes to an end. It's Pat Mario's no score, Elliott Lake United no score at the end of the first half of the Dieter Ellisette tournament final. And we'll be back at the, in just a moment as play resumes for the second half. To second half action of the Dieter Ellisette tournament final between Elliott Lake United and Pat Mario. Number of good scoring opportunities in the first half, at least uh, two by each team, Joe, but neither team able to finish and put the ball in the back of the net, so we've got a scoreless draw as play gets underway momentarily. Yeah, we saw a pretty even first half there, Bob, with Toyota, uh, Toyota, that's old Toyota, Pat and Mario coming out and playing a real good control game, and then uh, after about 25 minutes or so, Elliott Lake seemed to have taken over, but uh, we should see more of the same second half. Like I said, uh, Pat and Mario has a lot of experience out there. I know I keep saying that. Uh, a little uh, known fact that some of these players, Bob, have won an Ontario Cup as Peewees. I don't know if you were aware of that or not, but uh, I see uh, uh, Frank Cristo out there, and he was a member of the team. Uh, uh, Cesar Pacito, Renato, who's not playing. Uh, so they've been in soccer a long time. Should be a good second half. Jack Antonio to Palladino. Palladino in midfield for Pat Marios to Carlos Castillo. Who's come on in this, this half. Castillo, another Serbian United player from last year. Scarcelloni, Frank Baratti, Castillo, and it's a long ball by Marino to Jack Antonio to relieve the pressure. Duhame is there, plays it back to his, no, plays it out in the far wing. In the touch, you will have a Pat Mario's throw in. Looks like Frank wants to, uh, Frank and Zelma wants to warm up right away there. Did quite a bit of running to get to. Get to that ball, it's in the uh, thrown out, but Elliott Lake coming forward. On the far wing, challenged by Dino Cacciotti. It's in the touch, and Cacciotti with the throw in, looking for Anselmo, in the touch once again. And Pat Mario is coming forward with the throw in after throw in as the uh, first ha second half just gets underway. And it's not warming up out here, Bob. I sure hope you got your tomatoes uh, covered. Well, if, I, if all I have to worry about tonight are my tomatoes, we're okay. <laughs> because it is getting cold. Throw in. Challenge, Elliott Lake with the clearance. Cacciotti there, challenged by O'Neill. 
The infraction against uh, Dino Cacciotti indicated by the referee. Pietro D'Angelo and we'll have a free kick awarded to Holly Lake United. It's a low ball, skips, and Paladino is there to Rubai. Rubai looking for Castillo. Plays it to Scarcelloni, switches into the middle, looking for Anselmo. And Mero D'Agostino plays it back. Rob McTaggart controls. Plays it back to his keeper. And Marino Scarcelloni looking for the clearance. Di Giacomo Antonio with control. Plays it for Anselmo and Castillo. Castillo first times it. But Paparo off his line, gathers it in once again. One thing about Castillo, you don't have to worry about his work rate. It's 110% all the time. Yes, for sure. And uh, he's, he's a nice player also in that he's a left footer. And left footed players are hard to come by. So uh, there's always room for a left footed player on a team, Bob. Move him, Joe. Seems to me that Elliot Lake might be trying to catch uh, Pat and Mario's there on a few long balls, and uh, they almost did on the one rush on the left wing there. Well, that's certainly been their style most of the season. They play that English uh, style, a kick and run, and a run and gun, some people call it, and uh, it, based on long balls. And uh, you either have very speedy fullbacks to, uh, to combat it, or you keep your players back and, and uh, in strength uh, to... Uh, the defense against it. More Baratti off Paladino. Anselmo to Castillo. Castillo with time. Looking to make the cross. Off an Elliott Lake player into the hands of Nick Paparo with the clearance. Once again, it's uh, two Elliott Lake players on Rob McTaggart. McTaggart got ahead to it. Challenging for the ball. Frank Cristo, nobody there. And it's Taco pushing it through. Andrew O'Neill as a Pat Mario's player goes down. I believe that's Mario D'Agostino once again. He's twisted his ankle, I guess, as he was trying to turn. Yes, there's that field uh, again, Bob. The one thing you don't want to do is give uh, that uh, young O'Neill any chances, opportunities. That, that fellow has a, has a good finishing touch on him. He can score goals. And Elliot Lake with the throw in on the far side. Mario no. D'Agostino there for Pat Marios, looking for Rubai. Rubai chests it down to Danny Palladino. Palladino to Rob Scarcelloni. Scarcelloni for Castillo. This time being challenged by Baratti, placed it into the middle. Mike Brown is there for Elliot Lake. Brown playing it out on the far side. I believe to Robertson. Paladino challenging. It's into touch. Push, pushing and shoving by both players there, Bob. And it looks as if the referees awarded a free kick to Pat Marios, Frank Cristo, for Marino Di Giacomo Antonio. Back to Cristo. Cristo with a quick cross into the middle. There's some height there. Castillo with control, beats his man, going for the goal line, it's into touch, and it'll be a Pat Mario's throw in. Long throw in. Sam Conji, for the leg, pushing it forward, O'Neill gets a foot to it. O'Neill once again, into touch, indicated by linesman Ignacio Spadafora. And it'll be a throw-in awarded to Pat Marios. But again, if we look at the field, you can see the Elliott Lake players well behind the Pat Marios defenders. And if they don't get uh, caught on an offside, they're through. Got a clear path to the goal. Paladino plays it back for Crystal, but Taco is there. Once again, long ball. Well, Taggart up very well to get that ball. Baratti for Elliott Lake. Through traffic, being challenged. Taco, playing it on the wing for Kanji. Sam Kanji with con trying to control the ball. It's put into touch, and we'll have an Elliott Lake throw in. Come on, Kanji, can't throw very far. 
Frank Baratti coming up to take this throw in. Only one Elliott Lake player in the penalty area. Now two, the rest of them on the edge of the penalty area looking to make a run. Trying to get ahead to this ball. Long throw, powerful throw through the penalty area. I believe Dino Cacciotti went down. He's limping back in. Can't make uh, good effective contact and we'll have a goal kick awarded to Pat Mario. Mm, two good crosses in a row there, Bob. One by that throw in. That was an excellent throw in. Excellent. Then I gather Andrew O'Neill must have clipped uh, Dino Cacciotti. He went over him when the play was uh, was over. Apologize. Check to see that uh, Dino was okay. As we resume with the goal kick. Well, we all know about soccer players and their tender shins there. You see them on TV rolling around the grass. It, uh, it can sting you when you get kicked on the shin bone. Scarcelloni with the goal kick. Baratti gets ahead to it for Elliott Lake. Rob Scarcelloni lets the ball go into touch, and we'll have a Pat and Mario's throw in. Rob Scarcelloni for Pat Mario's, looking for Frank Anselmo, challenge from behind, and whistled down immediately by the referee. Free kick awarded to Pat Mario's. Rob McTaggart coming up from the sweeper position to take it. Down the wing looking for Anselmo. Anselmo has control of the ball, crosses it into the middle. Elliot Lake gets to it. Castillo heads it for Cristo, back in, looking for Anselmo. Good ball into the middle. De Jacqueline Tony was there once again. Two, two Pat Mario's players going for it. Castillo and Anselmo. A little miscommunication. Yes, that's the second time. That's uh, because Castillo's come on in the second half uh, with full of enthusiasm, and uh, maybe he should be going for some balls that he's not going for right now. He'll, he'll get it. Well, I'm uh, guessing that uh, Pat Mario's has moved to a 4-3-3, because it looks as if uh, Castillo and Selmo and Rubai are playing as forwards. And this is a little more offensive uh, formation, trying to get that first goal, Joe. Yeah, yes, that's what it looks like has happened now in the second half. Uh, so that what that basically means is that uh, Castillo should be playing on the left wing on the near side and uh, Rubai on the far side and uh, Frank and Selmo will be in the middle. And in two occasions we've had uh, confusion basically on the, the left of the left side of the field uh, between Anselmo and and uh, Castillo. And I think it's a matter of adjusting to the new formation, the fact that there's an extra striker up there. Right, it's quite normal, and especially, as I say, a new player coming onto the field there from the bench. He's, he's enthusiastic, he wants to get involved, so he's running off for the ball. D'Agostino gets ahead to it, comes forward, challenge there. The referee has indicated play on. Some objection from Elliott Lake. But Castillo with the ball, coming forward, making the cross. Robertson is there. Rubai challenging. Palladino is there as well. Palladino gets in touch, but Mike Brown is there for Elliott Lake to cover. Robertson comes away with it. Frank Cristo challenges off Cristo into touch, and we'll have a, an Elliott Lake throw in. Definitely, Elliott Lake is now trying to play the long ball, trying to get this early goal also, Bob. <laughs> And an, once again, an infraction indicated by referee Petro D'Angelo, who I think had an excellent first half, Joey, and uh, has maintained control of the play throughout. Yes, he did. Uh, Pietro's a very experienced uh, official, and uh, he doesn't let things get out of hand too often out there. Elliot Lake to take this free kick just in the midfield area. Castillo gets ahead to it. Rob Scarcelloni. Frank Anselmo touches it back in the midfield. Danny Palladino to Marino Di Giacomo Antonio. Palladino for Rubai. Rubai looking for Cristo on the far wing. Cristo trying to make the return pass off Mike Brown and Pat Mario's throw in coming up shortly. And we see that Rob Scarcelloni moving back to his fullback position had made a run coming up on the overlap to get into the play. But again, the danger is that if you get caught up, you better hope that some midfielders fall uh, falling back to uh, fill in the holes. Exactly, Bob. Great dimension to the soccer game, though, is an overlapping fullback, but uh, you have to pick your times. 
Oscar Saloni looking for Crystal, Mike Brown. The old up and under looks like Irish football at his finest. It's starting to remind me of Ireland in the World Cup. Uh, if the ball isn't 30 yards up in the air and 50 yards down the field, something's wrong. Rubai switching the play, looking for Castillo, who's making a run. Frank Anselmo blazing it through, and Castillo with the shot off. Unfortunately, the weaker of his two feet is right foot. And as Joey had pointed out earlier, Carlos is uh, naturally left-footed. Obviously, it would have been easier for him if he'd been able to take the shot on his left foot. Yes, uh, he got a little bit under that ball and uh, went up high. You know, talking about the, uh, the Irish football. <laughs> Have you ever seen that their national sport, Bob? Hurley, Hurley isn't it? Hurling, yes. We think our lacrosse is bad. <laughs> uh, that's a sport that requires intestinal fortitude and perhaps a fair bit of Irish spirits. Imagine 22 Irish people with sticks in their hands. <laughs> <laughs> in any event, we're back. Play underway. I hope my friend Jimmy Simpson didn't hear that. Paladino Rubai, and after you all wants routine, and Taco comes forward for Elliot Lake, pushes the ball through. Mario Scarcelloni gathers it up as O'Neill was rushing in, and clears. Looking for Castillo. Rob Scarcelloni off Sam Conji. Mar uh, Frank Anselmo, Stuart Duhame, long clearance. Mario D'Agostino in the middle. Rubai challenging. Castillo trying to get control of the ball. Being challenged from behind. Dan is put into touch and we'll have a Pat Mario's throw in in the Elliott Lake zone. Rob Scarcelloni coming forward. Frank Anselmo shielding the ball. Trying to maintain control and beat his man. Looking for support. Plays it back to Jack Antonio. Good shot. Off the upright, good play and good shot from well out. Yes, excellent. That's a kind of a traditional play for a, for an old center forward too, isn't it? You uh, you get the ball, you control it, you can hack the fair bit, then you control it, then you lay it off, and someone has to someone uh, coming up who has a clear shot on goal. Yeah, exactly, Bob. Actually, there's uh, two types of center forwards. One that is stri strictly a striker, and there's also a system where you use a a real good control player up there to lay the balls off to your uh, wingers or midfielders. And Frank showed us the ladder there in that play. And Elliot Lake uh, with the throw in. Frank Baratti. Move around. Elliot Lake players moving into position. Mike Brown gets ahead to it. Rob McTaggart there. Clears it out of harm's way, but into touch. Robertson there for Elliot Lake, and he'll be taking the throw in. Off Brown into touch, but it looks like an Elliott Lake throw in once again. Well, free kick. Free kick, yes. Elliott Lake pushing forwards, uh, players forward. Some tall players like Mike Brown in the penalty area. Keeper, oh, gets oh. the excellent opportunity there. Frank Baratti got ahead to it, and a reflex save by keeper Marino Scarcelloni. Yes, I couldn't understand the uh, the Pat Mario defense there. They looked like they just stood and watched. Uh, there's no way a player can get in free or should get in free uh, that, that clear. Well, we'll have a corner kick. Elliott Lake again, moving players forward. Outside the box, making a run. Keeper Scarcelloni and an infraction indicated by the referee. Then we'll have a free kick awarded to Pat Marios. But another good scoring opportunity for Elliott Lake. And so once again, we've evened up at about three, this time about three apiece. That's right. Goaltending has been strong tonight too. Uh, Scarcelloni made an excellent save there. Good reflex action there with that arm. And Nick paparo has been sharp coming off his line and pulling balls down. Interest, so, interesting to note, Bob Marino uh, Scarcelloni is playing goalkeeper now, started off as a defenseman, so... 
Well, I, there's a story about uh, Marino of several years ago when he was uh, the starting to, to play as a keeper for Team Toyota when he decided he wanted a pair of gloves. George McDonald was the manager of the team at the time. Wasn't too sure that it was worth spending a lot of money uh, on such an investment. And Marino tells the story that it looked like dollar ninety nine gardening gloves that he that he had that he started out playing keeper with. But uh, he's certainly come a long way as a very effective keeper over the last couple of years, winning the uh, goalkeeper of the year award last year. Uh, I think he had one of the lowest uh, goals against in league history. He has an excellent team in front of him, but he also works very hard, and he is a good keeper. When he when he's needed, he's there. Well, he certainly kept the team in a, a number of games early in the season, and uh, for a while he was taking the penalty shots for the team as well and scored a few. Nothing wrong with that. Nick Paparo here with the clearance for Elliott Lake United. Barry D'Agostino gets ahead to it, looking for Castillo. Castillo flicks it forward to Frank Anselmo. Anselmo on the edge of the penalty area, beats his man. He's got an opportunity for the cross, chips it forward, and it looks like a corner as uh, Nick Paparo appeared to uh, carry that ball with him over the goal line. Paparo arguing that the ball was already over when he touched it, and he should have a goal kick, but the referee is holding his ground. And Pat Marios will have a corner kick. Looks like uh, Isidin Rubai will be taking it. Isidin uh, is a right-footed player, so this should be an in-swinger. The ball should curl towards the, the goalkeeper in the goal. And uh, the idea here is Pat Marios to run into that ball and ram it in the back of the net. Keeper! Keeper didn't get to it, but it was cleared by Elliott Lake. Keeper called for it, but Mario D'Agostino was there. And uh, the keeper got just, just, just barely got a touch to it, and uh, Mario and the keeper both showed up at the same time there for that ball. Good corner by Isidin. Good scoring opportunity. <laughs> One thing about Frank Anselmo uh, is that, uh, as I said before, I've always seen him play fullback, and uh, he's an excellent fullback, but he's an excellent soccer player all around because on that head ball by Castile, he actually read that quite well to move into the space because uh, it, it really helps to, uh, to understand and read the game, and uh, Frank, Frank can certainly do that. Well, Frank, uh, I think, is the leading scorer. In fact, I'm sure he's the leading scorer for Pat and Mario's. Uh, and it didn't seem to matter whether he was playing as a striker or whether he was playing as a fullback. He was scoring all season long. Well, coach would love to have players like him where they can move them around from position to position if you need to. Ratty coming forward for Elliott Lake. Taco, Taco challenged by D'Agostino. Off Taco and in the touch. And we'll have a Pat Mario's throw in, I believe. The linesman is indicated. Come back. Rob Scarcelloni for Pat Mario's looking for players to run into space. Going down the line for Castillo. Castillo tries to maintain control, but it's uh, Hammond there, and Hammond will be taking the throw in for Elliott Lake. Off Baratti. Baratti chips it forward. Looking for O'Neill. O'Neill puts it into touch, and we'll have another throw in. We've gone about... It's getting a little dark, folks, and I can't see my watch, but it's uh, 20 minutes gone in the second half. Still no score in this Dieter Alistat uh, final game between Pat Mario's and Elliott Lake United. Both teams with excellent scoring opportunities, and there's no tomorrow if the, if the uh, game ends in a draw or at the end of regulation time is still tied. We'll be looking at overtime, and if it's still, over, uh, still tied after overtime, we'll be looking at penalty shots because there has to be a winner this evening. So I hope the boys in the truck bought lots of tape just in case. Castillo into the middle. Crystal coming forward. Wide of the net, but again, lots of white shirts in the, in the penalty area. Scoring opportunity as a result. It's one of the rare times in the second half that the ball has gone to the right side, actually, Bob. It looks like Pat and Mario's are playing the left side quite a bit. Maybe they've noticed something in the Elliott Lake defense. Uh, I'm not sure if they're doing it conscientiously or not, but it seems like most of their play is here on the left side. Cacciati looking for Rubai. 
Robertson is there, puts it in the touch for Elliott Lake, and once again will resume play with a Pat Mario's throw in on the far side. Frank Cristo there to take it for Pat Mario's. For Rubai, challenged in the touch. And it's another Pat Mario's throw in. An opportunity here if the team wants for a longer throw in. I see uh, Marino Di Antonio coming forward to take it. Because they're just uh, at about the 18 yard area on the far side. And Selmo chipping it forward. Good, good ball in the middle. Castillo couldn't get a foot to it. Castillo with control, being challenged by Kanji. Infraction indicated again. I guess uh, challenge from behind, Joe. Looks like a little bit of pushing and shoving going on by both players there, and I guess uh, the Elliott Lake player might have had an arm on Castillo. And... So Elliott Lake setting up the wall. You can see uh, the player checking with his keeper to make sure the wall is in the right place. And it will be Castillo taking the free kick for. Pat Marios. Look for Frank Gonzalmo or Mario D'Agostino on this one. A little far, head still in the area. D'Agostino is there, but Paparo read it well. Was in, the, got himself in a position. And again, the long clearance, trying to catch the uh, Pat Marios fullbacks up. But sweeper McTaggart was there to control the ball, play it back to his keeper. And we can expect, and there's the clearance. Looking for Anselmo once again. Elliot Lake gets to it. Frank Cristo challenging. Dino Cacciotti there. In the touch. And we'll have a, an Elliot Lake throw in. Yes, on that clearance by Elliot Lake, unfortunately, O'Neill was all alone there. And uh, Theo, uh, Theo, I keep saying, <laughs> Pat and Mario's had the three players back there. So not much of a chance there for O'Neill. Jack Antonio looking for Palladino. Once again, Frank Castillo back to Palladino. Danny Palladino coming forward. Lovely ball for Rubai. Rubai's got one man to beat. Keeps coming forward. Palladino. Taco is there, but Frank Anselmo comes forward, and Mike Brown tries to clear it. Palladino challenging. Frank Cristo may crack it on the volley. Couldn't get, couldn't get a good shot. Cristo comes forward once again. And Paparo picks it up, and we'll have a long clearance. Cacciotti challenging there. D'Agostino, Cacciotti to Scarcelloni. Scarcelloni challenged by Kanji. Scarcelloni, and it's put in a touch, and we'll have a Pat Mario's throw in. Rob Scarcelloni. Through the Jack Antonio, up and under, well in the touch, and we'll have an Elliott Lake throw in. Yes, I'm not throwing that. Uh, the Jack Antonio is telling Rob he wanted it to his feet, and uh, Rob, for some reason or another, gave it to him to his chest. Ready for Elliott Lake. Good ball, plays it square. Robertson coming forward from his fullback position. Rubai came back, cut it out to DiGiacomo Antonio, to Cristo. Cristo looking for Anselmo. Elliott Lake with the clearance. And off Scarcelloni's head into touch. Andrew O'Neill for Elliott Lake. Taco to Barati. Barati challenged. Loses control and Selmo plays it for Rubai. Rubai being challenged. Plays his man. Beats, beats the second player. Rubai down the wing looking for Anselmo. Good judgment, good play. Anselmo maintains control, plays it once again. Back to Rubai, sets it up for DiGiacomo Antonio to take the shot. But wider than that. Well, uh, young Isidin Rubai showed a facet of uh, soccer there that I hadn't seen in him before. He's got quite, quite the speed out there. Excellent run by him. Goal kick to Elliott Lake United. Jack Antonio in midfield. 
for Anselmo. Anselmo chests it down. Duhem and Rubai challenging there. Anselmo gets ahead to it. An infraction indicated by the referee and will have a free kick. Awarded it looks to Pat Mario. Once again, we see the wall being set. Well, all three players that are lined up to take this uh, have good good shots, Bob, so any one of them could take it. We might see a run over by one of them and a shot by the other. Let's see what they do here. Just the way you called it, but uh, the shot was mishit and high and wide of the net. Boy, if only soccer players had two or three chances. <laughs> I'm sure Frank would like to see that one back. That was his defensive skills coming into it. <laughs> I guess that's just a straight uh, question of mechanics, uh, Joe, and technique in terms of getting a knee over the ball and pointing the toe and all that stuff. Concentration on those concentrations. To him. In a touch. And we'll have a Pat Mario's throw in on the far side. Frank Crystal taking it. Frank came in beginning of the second half. Very experienced player, as Joe has pointed out. Yeah, so unfortunate for Frank there. He's the type of player that uh, likes to play with the ball and likes to see it. And uh, he hasn't really seen much of the ball in the, the second half yet. Again, an opportunity on the through ball. Rubai going through there, but into touch is cleared. Once again into touch, and then we'll have a second throw in on the far wing. Frank Cristo once again looking for Anselmo and an infraction indicated by the referee. Then a free kick awarded to Pat Marios. Paladino there to take it. Number of players making the run. Barcelona gets ahead to it, but pushes it wide of the post. Pat Mario's not afraid to move their defensemen up on plays like that. Uh, you can see Mario D'Agostino coming back and Scarcelloni. That's two of their fullbacks that have moved up for uh, plays like that. Uh, very seldom you see a coach send two or three players up. He might send one, but uh, Pat Mario's not afraid to do that. They got a lot of height, but they try and take advantage of it. Another goal kick as Elliott Lake play underway. Mike Brown. <laughs> to, I believe, Robertson. Robertson for Taco. Taco has got lots of speed. Switching the play into Baratti. He's a very talented midfield player. Frank Baratti. Back to Taco. Taco coming forward. An infraction indicated there. And the referee, Pietro D'Angelo, appears to be booking number 13, Frank Baratti. I don't know whether Frank said something out there. Obviously he did, uh, because the, uh, the play had been whistled dead, and uh, the Elliott Lake player must have commented something. What's odd, though, is that the, uh, the play was called for him, so uh, I don't understand what his beef would be. As I said before, though, Pietro's very experienced and uh, he won't take any of that stuff from the... Well, it looks like the call did go against oh, Elliot Lake. <laughs> Taco. Challenged by Crystal and Crystal comes away with the ball on the far wing. Frank Crystal looking to make the cross. Elliot Lake gets ahead to it. Jack Antonio to Cacciotti. Cacciotti being challenged. Frank Crystal once again. Lays it back. There's the cross once again. Scarcelloni's come up from his fullback position looking to make the cross. Pat Mario's bringing players forward, but they're dangered being caught in the back. Fortunately, Taco, instead of pushing the ball forward, decided to run with a dribble, and we have number 10, O'Neill, caught on the offside by the linesman, Ignacio Spadafora. Real good play by Rob McTaggart there, seeing that his uh, midfield was trapped and uh, his defense was trapped. He moved everybody up and, ca and caused the offside. Very nice experience play by Rob. 
Tries to chip it for, is it in Rubai, but it's in the touch and Elliott Lake. And restart play with the throw in. Mary D'Agostino for Pat Marios being challenged. Maintains control, lays it back to Rob McTaggart. McTaggart back to his keeper, Marino Scarcelloni. And we'll be looking at a long clearance. Make sure, Joe, make sure. Castillo maintaining control. Goes down. On the challenge, and we'll have a free kick awarded to Pat Mario. The Lake player lucky there that he didn't get a booking, uh, Bob. That was a kind of a violent tackle. Jack Antonio with the cross, looking for D'Agostino. Danny Palladino coming through with the shot, but wide. And it'll be a goal kick awarded to Elliott Lake. <laughs> a, few, a few players have been losing their footing uh, tonight on the field. I noticed uh, two just in uh, the last moment or so as Elliott Lake makes substitutions. And part of it, I'm sure, is just that the uh, the grass is in, in rough shape. And part of it is with, with the weather being what it is, the uh, field is probably semi-frozen just like we are. <laughs> semi-frozen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what happens to out there, Bob, is that the, the, the center of the field is bare and then the wings, uh, the grass is high and uh, it's, it's different footing. So if a player runs from the bare spot to the to the grass, uh, he has to change his running style and sometimes they don't. Holly Lake with the goal kick on the far wing. Paladino challenging. D'Agostino gets to it, but it's off. I believe Frank Cristo went into touch, and so we'll have a throw in to Elliott Lake. Mike Brown is up there for Elliott Lake. Mike Brown was really one of the individuals very instrumental in getting Elliott Lake United into the Senior Men's League this year. Played very well as a, one of the more older, more experienced players on the Elliott Lake team. Yeah, I was just going to say that, Bob. He seems like a very experienced uh, player. He's uh, uh, the other games I've seen him play, though. It seemed to me that he was playing defense. So it looks like he's moved up to the midfield tonight. Ready, challenged by Castillo, maintains control. Long ball. Elliott Lake running it down. Cacciati, good defensive position, gets control, and is hauled down from behind, and quickly takes the free kick to Marino Di Giacomantonio. Di Giacomantonio, long ball, looking for Anselmo. Keeper is there, well off his line at the edge of the goal area. Gathers it in, clears. D'Agostino to Cristo for Rubai. Paladino. To Di Giacomantonio. Di Giacomantonio coming forward. High foot, I guess, indicated by the official. I wasn't quite sure. It looked like he signaled a handball, actually, but uh, I'm not quite sure on that one either. Good ball to Castillo. Castillo the chance. Tries to one time it. Puts it wide of the net. But a good scoring opportunity there for Castillo. Excellent scoring opportunity. And it was on his left foot, too. Uh, again, I'm sure Carlos would like to see that one back. Looks like we'll have a substitution for Pat Marios. Danny Palladino coming off and Cesar Pacito going on. Exchanging one excellent player for another. Marino Di Giacomo Antonio. Cristo, Cristo looking for someone on the far wing, but nobody there. It looks as if perhaps uh, Castillo and Rubai have switched wings uh, temporarily. Or what's happened, Bob, is that uh, Caesar is a left footer and he's also a midfielder, so uh, he's come to play on the uh, left side and Castillo has uh, gone back into the middle. So we could see uh, Pat Mario switching back to the 4-4-2 now. That cross by Elliott Lake, but unfortunately Rosado could get ahead to it. And so we'll have a goal kick awarded to Pat Marios. 
We have only nine minutes left in this second half. Still no score. As McTaggart with the goal kick for Rubai. Controls the ball well, plays it for Christo. Crystal challenged immediately by two players from Elliott Lake. Elliott Lake pushing it forward. Crystal comes back effectively, plays the ball back to his keeper. Scarcelloni slipping on the turf, gathers the ball in to challenge Mandrew O'Neill once again. And we'll have the long clearance. Looking for Castillo. Jack Antonio gets to it to Castillo. Castillo plays it for Rubai, touches it back. Looking for Anselmo, no offside call here. Challenge on the keeper, and it's cleared over the goal line by Duhame for Elliott Lake. Paparo came off his line to try and gather that in, but before he could, Frank Anselmo got to it. Anselmo couldn't make a good shot. Some contact, but it was a 50-50 ball. Uh, nothing uh, dirty there. No whistle, and Duhame cleared the ball over his goal line. And so we'll have a corner kick awarded to Pat Marios. Once again, cleared off the line. And Elliot Lake clears it into touch, and we'll have a Pat Marios throw in. But a couple of good scoring opportunities in the last minute for Pat and Marios as they're trying to get the uh, the goal. Yeah, Pat and Marios caught the uh, Elliott Lake defense playing uh, what we call square in a straight line at the back and uh, the, the through ball beat all four defenders and uh, Anselmo was able to go right through there. Bob Scarcelloni, Rubai, to Jack Antonio, to Pacito. Pacito beats his man, challenging, beats his man, tries to beat his man again. Claims there was obstruction, but the referee says play on, and a goal kick awarded to Elliott Lake United. Looks like uh, as the teeth start to chatter here, Castillo is playing in the middle once again. And D'Agostino with the clearance, looking for Rubai in the far wing. Rubai being challenged by Robertson. Robertson gets a foot to it. Back to Robertson, or to Duhame, Duhame, trying to return the pass. On the far wing, Mike Brown for Elliott Lake. Brown coming forward, challenged, and an infraction indicated by the referee, and we'll have a free kick awarded to Elliott Lake United. Taken quickly, Brown. Switching the play. Scarcelloni gets ahead to it. Elliott Lake once again, looking for O'Neill. O'Neill's in the goal area, beats his man. Scarcelloni came back, and D'Agostino plays it back to his keeper, Marino Scarcelloni. Pat Mario's pushing forward. Castillo to DiGiacomo Antonio, pushes it, long ball. Five Elliott Lake players, and Frank and Selmo up for Pat Mario. Clearance by Paparo. D'Agostino to Brown. Brown gets it. Challenged by Cristo. Elliot Lake once again. Taco. Jack of Antonio. And the two players trying to come forward. Baratti is there. Baratti for O'Neill. O'Neill looking to make the cross. The ball wouldn't run properly for him off his foot and well over the, the net. Actually, I think uh, O'Neill was uh, taking a shot on net on that one, Bob, and I've seen him crack some really good shots from that area. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't get the contact or didn't get over the ball like he would have wanted to. So, we'll resume play with a goal kick. Rob Taggart looking on the near wing for Pacito, but it's in a touch, and it'll be an Elliott Lake throw in. Frank Baratti there. Plays it into space. Mike Brown's run well, coming up from midfield. Taggart anticipates, cut the ball out, but Baratti with a chance. And a good shot, just a few feet high. Through the uprights, three points in football, but nothing in soccer. A good anticipation there by Baratti and a, a good scoring chance. About four minutes left in this Dieter Alisad final. No score. 
Both teams trying to get that, that winning goal. Referee indicates uh, some pushing on Frank Anselmo and apparently is awarded a free kick. Bob's Garceloni leaving the ball for Rob McTaggart. And moving in to cover McTaggart's vacated position. Looking for Rubai. Headed into touch by Baratti, and we'll have a throw in awarded to Pat Marios. And again, McTaggart's coming forward. Chance here for the long throw. I see uh, D'Agostino has come forward, pushing the back there, but Rubai manages to maintain control. Pacito tries to cross, but off his foot improperly and over the goal line, and we'll have a goal kick awarded to Elliott Lake United. And the game is holding pretty much true to form, as we'd suggested at the beginning of the game, Joey, that uh, the games uh, so thus far in the season between these two teams have been close, hard-fought games, and so far that's exactly what we've seen. It's been a good final, Bob, an excellent final. Uh, you, you have actually the two top teams, as I understand it. Uh, Pat and Mario's finished first, and uh, Elliott Lake finished second in the league, so you're going to get yourself a good game tonight. Anytime you can get the two top teams uh, playing in a game... Uh, and the nice thing is, it's basically the uh, the players on both teams are stuck to soccer. There hasn't been much of the rough stuff. Uh, only one card. Yes, and that, that was for yapping. It wasn't for any rough stuff. Uh, it's been an excellent game all around. Elliot well, Lake coming forward. An opportunity here. Looking for support. So, oh. And it looks as if the keeper managed to save it. Elliot well, Lake thought they had a sure goal. Excellent scoring opportunity. One, one of the uh, one of the times again that uh, the Pat Mario team got caught up in the long ball through uh, on the left wing there. Ferrati being challenged, plays it on the wing. Rosado can't get to it, and so we'll have a Pat Mario's throw in. Just as I said before, though, Bob, a goalkeeper uh, is sitting there for about five, six, ten minutes, not doing anything, and then you get an opportunity like that, and he comes up with a great save. Uh, that's the type of keeper you need. Uh, Scarcelloni sure is, sure is that type of keeper. Cheeto into the middle. Brown is there for Elliot Lake. Cuts it out. Challenged by Crystal. Maintains possession once again. Trying for that long wing. Long ball on the wing. Excuse me to catch Yachty. Chance here, another save by Scarcelloni. Brown trying to take the long shot, but it's well wide, and this one's over the fence. Well, I would say that's two game saves in a row for uh, Marino there. I think some of his players will have a word with him after the game. <laughs> Pat Mario's replaces the ball and play resumes with the goal kick, but two very good chances for Elliott Lake in the last minute or so. And the referee has indicated that the second half has come to an end, still no score. So we'll be back for overtime in just a moment on TV7, your community sports channel. And from Queen's Athletic Field, the final of the Dieter Ellisat tournament between Elliott Lake United and Pat Mario. Thus far in the game, no score. We've had the coin toss to uh, determine who's going to have a kickoff and determine size of the pitch to for this overtime. Overtime, of course, in soccer consists of two 15-minute halves. And if there's no winner or loser, the loser declared in that 30-minute period, then we go to penalty shots. So both teams will be attempting to score that uh, first goal, but at the same time worried about conceding one. So uh, it can be a time of uh, push forward offensively or play a more defensive style of play, depending on what the coaches have had to say in the dressing room. And it looks as if Elliott Lake uh, has won the, uh, the kickoff for this first half of overtime. Referee uh, Pietro D'Angelo checking with his officials, setting his, uh, his watch, and plays underway. Taco to Brown. To Baratti. Baratti being challenged by Castillo. 
And it's in the touch, and we'll have a Pat Mario's throw in. Cesar Pacito coming forward. I see that uh, is it in uh, Rubai is setting out his first half of overtime. Joe Hamer's gone back in. Frank Christo's uh, on the bench as well. So a number of substitutions as the ball comes back to keeper Nick Paparo. Gathers it in. Makes the long clearance. Whoa. And a little bit of action there as Rob Scarcelloni didn't appreciate uh, what was going on, but uh, the referee had blown the whistle. Uh, not a good way to start the uh, overtime to get uh, red carded or yellow carded, Bob. Uh, time to uh, settle down and just uh, stick to soccer and see if you can score that winning goal. Well, there's not much point when you've gotten the uh, the whistle anyways, and the referee's awarded the free kick uh, to uh, retaliate, because basically all you're going to do is get yourself in trouble. But at the same time, I suppose players don't uh, want to let themselves be pushed around and tend to indicate that they're going to push back. Exactly. Sometimes you got to stand your ground. Chance here. Cacciati in position. Elliot Lake with the shot. Oh, just wide. Scarcelloni got a hand to it, pushed it uh, wide of the goal. Was challenged there, and certainly contact as Frank Anselmo comes forward. Ball bouncing, plays it back to DiGiacomo Antonio, clearing it into the middle, but Duhame is there to Mike Brown. Good chance for Elliot Lake to get that opening goal. Excellent chance. They come out firing out here, and uh, excellent chance. Scarcelloni again comes up big, and I think he got a little bit injured on that play. Uh, the Elliot Lake player landed on him and uh, seems to be uh, favoring a shoulder there. Chip forward. Paparo gathers it in as he was being challenged by Cesar Pacito. And it looks as if we'll have the long clearance. Mary D'Agostino there with a head for Joe Hamer. Hamer tries to control to D'Agostino. D'Agostino coming forward. Brown gets to it. Palladino challenged by Baratti. Baratti hands the ball. Plays it, and Frank Anselmo about six yards offside. <laughs> got caught napping there, I guess. He just got caught napping, yeah. Lions from Spadafora right on uh, the spot. Flag went up and the whistle's blown and we'll have a free kick awarded to Elliott Lake United. Elliott Lake pushing forward, looking for that first goal. Mike Brown challenged by Hamer. Hammer with the ball. Two to Jack Antonio. Four and Selmo. And Selmo turning. Can't make the pass. A little slow. And once again, Elliot Lake in the offensive zone. O'Neill trying to take the shot. Scarcelloni plays it to his brother. Keeper Marino Scarcelloni. Some pressure there from Elliot Lake. And the long clearance. Looking for Castillo on the far wing. Into touch, and we'll have an Elliot Lake throw in. It looks as if Elliot Lake has decided they're going to push forward and try and score in a hurry. And Pat Mario's counterattack, but basically defensive posture. And Pat Mario's has been caught out once or twice already, Joey, in terms of. Uh, not enough players back to handle the uh, the pressure from from Elliott Lake. Yes, it's a continuation of the uh, second half there in regulation time. Elliott Lake still likes to play that long ball and hope that they uh, can catch the uh, Pat Mario defense napping. But uh, I don't think you'll see Pat Mario defense when moving up as much as you did in the in the regulation time. <laughs> Taggart, the clearance. Duhaim gets to it to Baratti. Baratti pushing it forward. Rosato to Taco. Cacciati gets a foot to it. Can clear. In the touch, and Elliot Lake has the throw in. Boudon leaves it for Robertson. Robertson into Brown. Brown coming forward. Down the near wing, and it's 
Joe Hamer putting the ball into touch, and once again, Elliot Lake with the throw in, this time in a more offensive position, and they may be looking for the long throw. Frank Baratti, who uh, did an excellent job in the second half with one long throw right into the uh, center of the box. As Elliot Lake pushes forward, players making the run. Excellent long throw, Brown flicks it over everybody, and it'll be into touch on the far side. And Pat Mario's with the throw. Quickly taken. Castillo tries to get to it. DiGiacomo Antonio for Pat Mario's. To Paladino. Paladino looking for Hamer. Once again, Elliot Lake pressing. Pushing it through. Looking for O'Neill. O'Neill trying to make the cross. Looks like the ball went into touch, and we'll have a Pat Mario's throw in. And yeah, O'Neill was trying to control the ball and make the cross. Rob McTaggart taking his throw and I guess waiting for his keeper to get his shoelaces uh, tied. Robertson challenged by Anselmo. Robertson maintains possession. Plays it to Brown. Brown challenged by Anselmo. Anselmo back heels. Brown is there. Switches the play. Scarcelloni for Pat Marios. Maintains possession to, oh, it's in the touch, and it'll be Elliott Lake. So far, the first five minutes of this first overtime half, possession's all been in the Pat Mario's end, as Elliott Lake have really put on the pressure. Mike Brown with the shot, but again, it's a great field goal, but not through into the netting, and we'll have a goal kick awarded to Pat Mario's. Rob McTaggart. Pat and Mario seems to be really tentative here. I don't understand that. They've been in situations like this before. They know they can't sit back and... Uh... Looking for Pacito on the far wing. It goes into touch, and the Pat Mario's throw in. This is about the first time in this, this half, Joe, that uh, it's, it's been in the Elliott Lake zone at all. Rob Scarcelloni to take the throw in. Down the line, flicked on, bought an infraction. Again, challenge from behind. Well, the Elliott Lake player had his uh, his arm on the uh, Pat Mario player back. And uh, like I said before, we were told as referees that we call stuff like that. Into the middle, D'Agostino gets ahead to it, but uh, wide of the net. And we'll have an Elliott Lake <coughs> goal kick in just a moment. Looks like Elliott Lake uh, will be making a couple of substitutions. I see Sam Conji and uh, Hammond warming up. You know, both teams have used their bench as well tonight, Bob. Uh, on, on, a, on a night like tonight, it's good to get everybody into the game there. It's awful cold sitting outside. And well, it certainly is. There go my teeth again, and uh, my apologies for the chattering. But it's a cool <laughs> evening. Now this play gets underway. Taco forward with Taggart. Can't make the connection, and Scarcelloni recovers for Pat Marios. To McTaggart, to Scarcelloni. Scarcelloni with a little time to Pacito. Pacito to McTaggart. McTaggart coming forward. Loses possession. Brown is there. O'Neill's offside. But uh, Baratti maintains control of the ball, and O'Neill gets himself in an onside position. A good play by Baratti. And it's a Elliott Lake throw in, it appears. No, it's a free kick. Awarded to Elliott Lake. Again, in a dangerous position. They push players forward. D'Agostino gets ahead to it. To Anselmo. Anselmo beats Robertson. Robertson, good tackle. Cacciotti is there to cut it out. Cacciotti with time to Anselmo. Back heel for Hamer. Hamer challenging. Elliot Lake coming away with that ball. I believe that's pressed. Oh. Dangerous challenge there. And the referee has indicated a free kick to Pat Muriels. 
Hammer with possession. Two Elliott League players on him. Plays it back to D'Agostino. Up the wing looking for Anselmo. Robertson is there. Challenge from behind. And it's a free kick awarded to Elliott League. Robertson with the free kick. D'Agostino gets ahead to it. Cacciotti keeps the ball in play. And D'Agostino with the ball. Loses possession. Scarcelloni. Taco there. Paladino. Long ball. Castillo on a run. Challenging. Played back to keeper Paparo. And we have about four minutes left in this first half. Still no score, but Elliot Lake has certainly had the best of this half. A couple of great scoring opportunities. Yes, what I think what's happening, Bob, is that the uh, Pat Mario defense are getting a little too cute with the ball. They have to get the ball upfield a little bit quicker. It's all right to make one or two passes for control, but then you have to get, uh, you get, get the ball moving upfield. Flick forward for Castillo. He's looking for some support. He plays it back for Frank Anselmo. Sliding tackle there. Puts the ball into touch. And we'll have a throw-in awarded to Pat Marios. Uh, it looks like Cesar Pacito taking that, and he's capable of the long throw also. Bob. Looking for Danny Palladino. Palladino tries to return it. Back to Palladino, into the box. D'Agostino trying to go for it, but Paparo off his line quickly and clears very quickly, trying to catch Pat Mario's forwards, or defenders up. But Taggart with the challenge. No whistle. Play goes on. Into touch, and we'll have a Pat Mario's throw in. But Taggart trying to come forward. And no call. So we'll have the throw in once again. This time it looks like uh, Castillo taking it. Looking for someone to make a run into the box. Hammer is there. So is Elliott Lake and Baratti once again into touch. Elliott Lake's the type of team, they don't, uh, on defense, they don't like to take too many chances. Uh, they just get that ball out of danger and that's exactly what the player did it there, Bob. Well, that's that old when in doubt, kick it out. When <laughs> yes, I've heard that one before, when in doubt, kick it out. Gives your players a chance to get back and get into position. Into the box. Paladino challenging. Elliott Lake, long ball, and offside on Andrew O'Neill, who's been poaching up on the front. Yeah, he had called for the ball a split second earlier, and if he had, uh, if the player had given it to him when he had called for it, uh, he would have been onside, but the player was a little late giving it to him, therefore caught him offside. <laughs> <laughs> Here's O'Neill once again. Challenge from De Jacob Antonio. Well, we managed to stay away from that sort of stuff in the regulation time, Bob, but I guess tempers are starting to flare now. Well, I don't know whether we should give a, fl a plug to uh, Frank Malvaso at, at Four Star Sports, but I know both teams bought their uniforms there, and it's obvious that they're reasonably good quality because <laughs> both players were tugging pretty hard at the other players' uh, uniforms, and it looks like the uniforms are still in one piece. Still in one piece, yeah. So both uh, Marino Di Giacomo Antonio and Andrew O'Neill have been booked for the infractions. <laughs> With uh, less than a minute to go in this first half. And now there's an argument over who has the ball, whether it's a free kick awarded to Pat Marios or to Elliott Lake. And it looks as if the referee has decided that it's going to be a drop ball. Drop ball. <clears throat> Danny Palladino and uh, Mike Brown are the two players, respectively. Hammer, a uh, little pushing, cleared by DiGiacomo Antonio into, into touch, and we'll have a throw in to Elliott Lake United. This is Robertson, 
As the referee indicates that the first half of overtime has come to a conclusion, still no score. Elliott Lake with the better scoring opportunities in this uh, second half of uh, first half of overtime. Yes, the first one coming right in the opening minutes there, and uh, again uh, Marino Scarcelloni come up big for Pat Mario's. That's three excellent, excellent saves he's made tonight. So the teams will change signs. There's no uh, intermission here, no break, and we'll be resuming play in uh, just a moment or two as the. Uh, Goalkeepers move down to the their new nets on the other end of the field. Obviously, the referee would like to get this over with because Pietro and his colleagues, Tony Gallich and Ignacio Spadafora, must be feeling the cold uh, as well. Yes, especially the linesmen, Bob. The linesmen don't get to run as much as the referee, so uh, yeah, I, I can vouch for them that they're feeling it. <laughs> and we're underway. Pat Mario's with the kickoff. Hammer looking for Anselmo. Looks like Pat Mario's made a change here in this second half of overtime. Uh, we'll see Fabiani uh, has gone on and uh, Rob Scarcelloni has come off. And there's the through ball once again, looking for uh, Andrew O'Neill, but uh, no danger there. Then again, long clearance looking for Castillo. Put in a touch by Elliot Lake, that's number two Hammond. Castillo looking for Anselmo, Anselmo chests it down. Castillo's with control, beats his man. To Pachito, Pachito having a little difficulty as there were three Elliott League players in there. And it's in the touch, and we'll have a Pat and Mario's throw in. Some nice and nice passing by Pat and Mario's there, Bob, but they were within three yards of each other, and they weren't creating space, so. There we go with a good ball to Castillo. Challenged by Hammond with the cross in a hurry. Hammer misjudges the ball, and Mike Brown comes away for Elliott Lake down the far wing, being challenged from behind, maintains possession. Brown with the ball, pushing it through. But Mario D'Agostino is there. D'Agostino plays it for De Giacomo Antonio on the near wing to Paladino. Back to Cesar Pacito. Pacito into the middle for De Giacomo Antonio, switching the play on the far wing. I think that's Joe Hamer who's come up. Hamer from his midfield position to Anselmo, back to Hamer, an opportunity for the cross, off an Elliott Lake player and into touch. Uh, there's some uh, definite good soccer from Pat and Mario's, moving the ball up slowly with some nice passing, but steadily moving up the field, Bob. That's what teams like to try and do. Playing coach Joe Hamer with this throw in. Take it in the back door, Joe. Paladino tries to make the volley, can't connect, and Elliot Lake coming away. Kanji again, long ball, looking for O'Neill. Fabiani is there. Fabiani maintains control. O'Neill's challenging. O'Neill comes away with it. O'Neill looking for a player in the far wing, and he's got one. I believe that's Rosetto with the cross. Players getting ahead to it, and O'Neill and another field goal. That may make an NFL highlight reel, but uh, <laughs> not worth much in senior soccer. Well, I, there was no need for O'Neill to turn and kick that ball away like that. Uh, he, I'm sure he had lots of time. Maybe he didn't know it at the time, but he did. That's where communication on the field becomes important, Bob. Players love to hear what's going on out there. Sometimes you can't see what's going on behind you. It's nice to have one of your teammates let you know. Reno Scarcelloni, man of the match thus far with the clearance. It's in the touch, and it looks like a Pat Mario's throw in. Some disagreement by Elliott Lake, but not much. They're a very disciplined team in that regard. They play hard on the field, but uh, very gentlemanly and sportsmanlike. Cross, no problem offside, I gather, indicated by the linesman. And we'll have a free kick played by Duhame to his keeper, Nick Paparo. He's motioning his players to move forward with about 10 minutes left and the 30 minutes of overtime. Getting closer and closer to that penalty shot uh, kick. Uh. The Taggart is there covering, tries to play, chip it over, comes forward to Paladino. Paladino looking for Anselmo. 
Anselmo, back to Paladino. Paladino to Pacino. Carlos Castillo's made a good run. Diagonally beats his man. Oh, chance for the shot, but uh, I believe that was Baratti got back, got in the way. Excellent moves by Castillo and a good pass through by, from Cesar Pacino. But a great recovery there by Baratti to save the day so that his keeper had some support and some help. Yes, again, we see Pat and Mario playing their game, moving the ball up the field with some nice short passes. But like I say, moving up the field. Dino Cacciati going up for the ball, being challenged to Giacomo Antonio there. Chipping it forward, Castillo gets ahead to it. Mario D'Agostino, handball. Indicated by the referee. He's in good position. Saw it and called it. So another free kick opportunity for Pat Marios. From about the 30-yard uh, line, just about 10 yards outside the penalty area. Elliot Lake setting up the wall. Be interesting to see what Pat Marios will try and do here, whether the direct shot or whether well, they try and play it wide and have a player run onto it. They've had a chance to talk about it. The playing coach was there. Good ball through, but Paparo was able to get to it. And once again, Elliot Lake trying to come forward. Baratti pushing it through to Sam Kanji. Kanji for Taco. Taco has some support. Fabiani got a foot on it. Castillo challenged by Baratti. Steals down. A little slow getting up. Baratti once again coming forward. He's going to make the cross. Kanji is there. Sam Kanji plays it wide. O'Neill there. And it's over the goal line. We'll have a corner kick for Elliott Lake. Elliott Lake setting up for this corner. Seven players up. Pat Mario's have ten players in the goal area in defense. Taco to take this corner into the box. They're coming in and infraction indicated by referee Pietro D'Angelo and a free kick awarded to Pat Mario's. Played back into the keeper, Marino Scarcelloni, throws it out. Fortunately, off one of the Elliott Lake players, and Elliott Lake uh, on the attack very quickly. Into the middle, D'Agostino reads it well, plays it out. Mike Brown looking for some space to make the shot. D'Agostino coming forward from his defensive position, plays it down the wing, looking for Anselmo. Anselmo looking for support, doesn't have too much, and it's put into touch by Elliott Lake. Yes, unfortunately, uh, Anselmo was up, up the field there, and he was uh, basically alone, no, no support. Looking for the long throw, the volley, and Nick Paparo with the save. Here's the long ball, Cacciati to Fabiani. Kanji trying to control it. Kanji once again, Pacino gives him a little push, and we'll have a... Free kick awarded to Elliott Lake United. More like a big push there, Bob. Okay. <laughs> Seems to be turning into a seesaw battle here. Both teams there. Uh, Papero making an excellent save there on Mario D'Agostino. Once again into the penalty area. Scarcelloni off his line, gathers it in. And long clearance, looking for Castillo. Hammond there, into touch. And it'll be a Pat Mario's throw in. For Paladino, looking for Castillo, good ball. Challenged and into touch. I believe that's pressed number one. For Elliott Lake, who put it into touch, and we'll have a Pat Mario's throw in. On the near side in the... Elliott Lake zone. 
McTaggart coming forward. Looks like it'll be another long throw. Mario D'Agostino forward. So Pat Mario is getting some height into the uh, the goal area. Ben, uh, Nick Paparo off his line quickly once again, and Andrew O'Neill on the run. Fabiani is there. Fabiani gets control. It's a long ball, but Elliot Lake is there. Danny Palladino challenged, waited too long. Fabiani is there to cover for him. Tries to switch it, but Elliot Lake with the ball. Pushing it through, Dino Cacciotti is there. Mario D'Agostino, an infraction indicated by the referee. And it looks like a Pat Mario's throw uh, free kick. Obviously, some player must have said something because the referee is going over to have a chat with, I believe, uh, Mr. Robertson. He indicated he didn't appreciate the comments. No danger. And play gets underway with the free kick taken by McTaggart. Long one looking for Hamer on the far side. <laughs> Paladino for D'Agostino. Mario D'Agostino chips it forward. And Selmo can't get to it and we'll have an Elliott Lake throw in. But four and a half minutes left in this 30 minute overtime period. Still no score. Elliott Lake United and Pat Mario's in the final of the Dieter Ellisette. When we get to the penalty shots, Bob, all players that uh, are on the field at the time are eligible to take penalty shots if it comes to that. And uh, one thing the coaches have to look forward, uh, forward to is that uh, get the players that they want uh, taking the penalty shots on, on the, the field. field. And it, uh, two players from Pat and Mario's down. <laughs> Late, in, late into the overtime and getting cold like this, Bob, the, the muscles kind of start tensing up, and it's a lot easier to get your injuries in, too, so that could uh, be happening out there now also. It's like Frank and Zelmo's coming up limping again. Have's at it. Oh, through the goal area. It looks like a goal kick indicated by the linesman and the referee. And so we'll have Elliot Lake with the goal kick off this free kick. Pat and Mario's making a substitution, it appears, or going to. Yeah, it looks like they might want to get Isidin uh, Rivera out there uh, specifically for that penalty shot business because they're. Uh, Pulling the defense Monroe to Danny off, and uh, this, this I think, is exactly what they're doing. They want to get their penalty shooters out there, and I guess Isidin is one of them. Well, I think they're going to, the referee is uh, probably going to lose a little patience because Isidin doesn't have his boots on. So I suspect it'll be a minute or two. Relax, man. You'll have to do them up on the field. <laughs> well, they're done up, I guess. Uh, this play gets underway. Must have slip-ons, Bob. Huh? It's a new one on me. <laughs> Penny low for soccer cleats. Well, <laughs> what will they think of next? It looks like Hamer has moved back to a fullback position, replacing Fabiani, and I'm sure Rubai will be playing in a more offensive uh, position. I'm sure if you talk to Isidin, he'd probably be able to tell you that uh, he's uh, he's probably played some games in his bare feet. Oh, well, uh, it wouldn't wouldn't surprise <laughs> me at all. <laughs> Pat Mario's with the ball. It's to Jack of Antonio, to Hammer, to Pachito. Pachito has time and space. Being challenged now, beats his man with the cross. Paparo is there and shows good hands. Good hands yeah. oh, 
Taggart plays it back to his keeper. Moreno Scarcelloni with about a minute left in this overtime period. Several good chances, but so far no goals, and the referee has indicated that that's the end of overtime, and we'll be moving to penalty shots in just a second. And Joe, perhaps you could explain to the fans at home how the uh, penalty shot operation works, what the system is. Well, uh, the system is, Bob, that each coach assigns uh, five of his players to take penalty shots, and uh, they line up at center field, referee tosses the coin, and uh, then the teams decide who will shoot first or second. Uh, if these five players uh, shoot and the game is still tied after the five shots, then uh, one player uh, from each team uh, alternates shots, and uh, you go until you have a winner. Uh, you go right through to the 11th player if you have to. Yeah, and if it's still tied after 11 players, you just keep on going? You repeat, yes. So it, it, it's after the five, it's one. It's it's alternate one, 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 one. Right. Uh, until a winner is declared, and as many shots as are required to do that, that's what it takes. And certainly many people think that this is the uh, most exciting part of, or one of the most exciting aspects of of soccer and other people are very critical of it as a means of bringing a game to a conclusion. Well, the, the one thing about the uh, the uh, organizing body for soccer, uh, FIFA as it's known, is that they are, uh, soccer has been around for a long time and they are a touch conservative. They do want to preserve some of the uh, history of it. And uh, it really and truly, it's not it's not maybe the best way of ending it, but uh, it's got to be it's got to end somehow. And you got two excellent teams out there. That probably could have played another hour uh, without getting a goal. So uh, it, right. it's a way of doing it. And uh, who knows what uh, what they'll come out with. Well, I gather it uh, in a, in a number of uh, leagues uh, in in England, for example, they. Uh, in a number of games, if, it, if it's a cup game, that is to say a tournament type situation, and there's a draw uh, at the end of regulation time, they just have a rematch. They play the game from scratch over again several days later and uh, use that as a means of uh, settling the, the, the outcome. But of course, <laughs> Unfortunately, it's it's football season in, in Sudbury now, and we don't want to be playing rematch after rematch. If we did that during the uh, the season, we could be playing in November in the snow. Yeah, so. exactly. You have to end it somehow. A rematch would be nice, and I'm sure in some cases it, it would be feasible, but uh, there are times where you can't. And this, this technically is a tournament, and it has to end by a certain date. And uh, I guess this is the way they're going to end it. And uh, there's two good teams out there, Bob, two good teams, and both of them are deserving of winning, and uh, neither one is really deserving of losing. They, they're both, uh, you know, uh, they played a good game. They have nothing to be uh, disappointed about. And we're, we're going to get a winner and we're going to get a loser, but actually both teams had a super game tonight. Yeah, and uh, two of the best goalkeepers in the league, uh, both of them played extremely well. And as you said several times during the game, uh, Joe, that with the chances that Elliot Lake had, uh, Marino Scarcelloni really kept uh, Pat Mario's in this game on at least two or three three occasions where if he hadn't been able to get a hand of the ball, it would have been in the back of the net. Definitely. Uh, Marino had a super game. Paparo, on the other hand, he had a, he had an excellent game also. Maybe not as uh, game-saving saves as uh, Marino did. But uh, you talk to uh, coaches and players, and they say, well, that's what they get paid for, and uh, that's exactly right. They'll sit there sometimes 10 minutes with nothing to do, and then and then they have to make a save like that. They're called upon, and both goalies have done that tonight. Now, a lot of pressure on them here, but uh, both of these players have been in this situation before. They know what it's all about, and uh, they guess right or they guess wrong. It's simple as that. Well, I see that the referee has placed the ball in the penalty spot. Uh, uh, Nick Paparo is uh, in goal. So it'll be Pat Mario's with the advantage here. This is Danny Palladino here taking the first shot. And I'm a little surprised. I would have thought there might have been a linesman over there as well, but I guess he's the, the linesmen are keeping track of who's on the field and who's off the field, which is important because on occasion the team can try and sneak a player in. Here we go. Paladino with the goal. Shot to the keeper's uh, right and Paparo wasn't able to make contact. 
Excellent shot, Bob. Excellent shot. Uh, just to further comment on the referee and linesman uh, thing, Bob, uh, in regulation time when there's a penalty shot taken, uh, the players are on the field and they have a certain area that they can't uh, encroach. And uh, the referee has to watch that and therefore that's why you have a linesman there to watch that the goaltender doesn't move. In uh, extra time here, as you see, none of the players are around, so the referee only has the job of watching uh, that the goalie doesn't move, so that's why uh, he's the only one there. And you can see the referee uh, motioning uh, Nick Paparo out of the, uh, the penalty goal area totally, so he doesn't pose a distraction. Oh. Baratti <laughs> takes the shot, but Scarcelloni once again with the save, so Pat Marios has the advantage here. Excellent save by Scarcelloni. Excellent save. He judged right again. Like I say, uh, sometimes it's lucky, sometimes it's not. They say you got to be lucky to be good. you got to be good to be lucky. Uh, well, certainly Marino's been through this. Scarcelloni many, many times in the last uh, three seasons. And uh, certainly three years ago, it was uh, his ability to stop penalty shots that got, the, got what was then Team Toyota into... Uh, quarterfinal action of the Ontario Cup and again this year he's done it uh, and certainly last year he did it uh, in, on numerous occasions. Joe Hamer here to take the shot and Pafaro gets a hand to it so we're even up here so you see that so many times. One team gets the advantage, and then the other team, uh, the other player, just slackens off a bit. I think Joe uh, maybe didn't hit that as hard as he would have liked to, but unfortunate, you don't get a second chance at it. And now you just hope that your other players come through. It's a tough situation to be in, but uh, these guys have been in it before, and they know what it's all about. Mike Brown now for Elliott Lake United, setting the ball up on the penalty spot. As keeper Scarcelloni. Takes his time, getting into position. The rule is that the keeper has to be take a position on his line, has to be motionless until the ball is struck, and then he can go for it. And Brown with a hard shot, but high and off the bar, so at the present time, it's Pat Mario's one, Elliott Lake United, no score. Each team has taken two shots. Three shots remaining. At this stage, and it looks like uh, Carlos Castillo coming forward for Pat Marios. As Paparo gets himself uh, ready in the net. Referee will indicate when he's satisfied that everything is okay, and he's blown the whistle. Castillo with the shot, and goes to the same side as Danny Palladino did, and scores. So we have 2-0 in penalty shots. Elliott Lake coming forward to take their third. It's Andrew O'Neill for Pat Mario, uh, for uh, Elliott Lake United, excuse me, as Marino Scarcelloni resumes his position in the net. Again, with Carlos, uh, any goaltender will tell you that it's harder to defend against a left footed kicker, kicker for some reason, and Carlos did just that. Referee satisfied, all is in order. O'Neill taking the shot and puts it wide. It's 2 nothing with two shots per team left, so the best Elliott Lake can do is to tie, and we'll go to uh, alternate shots to decide it. And basically all Toyota, or excuse me, all Pat Marios has to do is to put the ball in the back of the net with their next two shots. In fact, with their next one shot, I guess, Joe, and they've uh, they've guaranteed themselves the victory. That's right, Bob. And uh, here's uh, is it in the, the player that was changed at the last minute there. The one with the loafer. Uh... With the loafer cleats there. <laughs> All right. The referee is indicated. Here's the shot over the net. Elliot Lake is still alive. Okay, guys. Rabai was looking for the top right-hand corner and. Unfortunately, from his perspective, it was high, and Elliot Lake is still alive. Well, that's something you really don't expect from a player of his experience. He uh, he he definitely got under that ball, and uh... well, this is interesting. Uh, here we have keeper on keeper for uh, Elliot Lake United. It's uh, their goalie Vince Paparo, or excuse me, Vin Nick Paparo. His uh, brother Vince plays for the Flyers, uh, taking this penalty shot against, uh, of course, the Pat Mario's keeper, Marino Scarcelloni. A little bit of a psych job going on out there, Bob. 
Looks like it, and it's a good goal. Not much pace on the ball, but he had uh, Scarcelloni guessing, so we're now looking uh, at uh, Pat Mario's two, Elliott Lake United one, with one shot apiece. If Frank Anselmo can score this goal, he's assured Pat Mario's of the Dieter Alisat Tournament Championship and the Dieter Alisat Trophy for 1990-1991. With the shot, and it's wide, and so we have an opportunity for Elliott Lake on its last shot to tie this game up and force alternate shots. Great opportunity in the last two uh, two goals, Joe, for yeah. Pat Marios to put it away. Yeah, they've had they've had the opportunities definitely, Bob. The last two shots that could have won them the game. It's. Uh, I don't know, sometimes you don't get a third chance. <laughs> Wait and see what happens. It seems to me that uh, obviously what you want to do is put it on the net and make the goalie make the save. And in those two cases, uh, one over the net and one wider the net. What happens a lot of times, Bob, in taking penalty shots is that you, you have in your mind decided what you're going to do, and then as you're running up to the ball, for some reason you change your mind. And if you change your mind at the last minute, that usually throws your shot off. Yeah. So Sometimes you look up and see the goalkeeper seems to be leaning one way or the other, and it throws you off a little bit. Well, here we go. And that's it. It's tied 2-2. Two -two. And so now we go to alternate shots. Pat Mario's had the advantage but has given conceded it and now we'll be looking at uh, alternate shots for Pat and Mario's it appears that Cesar Pacito number 11 will be taking the first of these as he comes forward sets the ball up on the penalty spot Nick Paparo getting into position once again same corner 3-2, Pat Mario's. That's the 11th shot in this uh, shootout. And it looks like, uh, I think it's Joe Taco coming forward for Elliott Lake United. Pressure, a lot of pressure on him now because if he misses or if Marino Scarcelloni makes the save, the game is over, Joe. And I think we're going to have a little bit of the Italian head game routine. Shaking of hands. <laughs> What the comments were, not very clear. But on the other hand, uh, as I've said earlier in the in the game, Elliot Lake certainly a very sportsmanlike team, very disciplined. With the shot, and it's in, and the referee has indicated he's not satisfied. He hadn't blown the whistle to indicate that uh, Mr. Taco was to take that shot, and so he'll have to retake it. The goal did not count. With the shot and he went to the same corner. All tied up. 3-3. Three, three. Rob McTaggart who coached uh, last year, played as well, was coach of the year, winner of the uh, MVP trophy in the past, will be coming forward to take this shot for Pat Marios. Referee is recording the numbers and so on. He's ready, he's blowing the whistle. Taggart blasts it and goes the other way this time. And it's 4-3, Pat Murios. Uh, Pepero guessed right that time, Bob, but it just goes to show you that if you strike the ball hard enough, then McTaggart definitely has a good, hard, a hard strong kick. Uh, it, it's hard for the goalie, even if he guesses right, it's hard for the goalie to get there. Looks like Sam Conji, number 11 for Elliott Lake, is going to be coming forward to take the penalty shot. I thank you for that's my Sam Conji setting the ball up on the penalty spot to his satisfaction. Marino Scarcelloni getting himself set. 
And the referee has indicated it's time to go. And Kanji guesses right. Four all. I don't know if you've noticed what's happened, Bob, but all the LA Lake players now seem to be shooting to uh, Marino's uh, right. I guess they figure that uh, most of the time he goes to his left, and so far they've proven him right. Well, Marino Di Antonio now is coming forward for Pat and Marios. This is the third, I think, of the alternate shots. We were tied 2-2 after regulation five. And it's in the corner. 5-4. Again, Pat and Marios puts the pressure on. Elliott Lake United sending out number 15. I believe that's uh, Bourdon who will be taking the shot. He played on the left wing, uh, as I recall, much of the game. Had a number of, uh, or created a number of chances with crosses. Played very well. Uh, looks like he's lining up to take it with his right foot, but... He does, and he catches the top corner. Well, so we're still tied at five apiece. Maybe a rematch wouldn't be that bad. <laughs> well, as I, as I look at it, this is 10, this is 16 shots, and we still don't have a winner. And Mario D'Agostino, the stopper for Pat Mario's coming forward. And same corner once again. 6-5 for Pat Marios. Elliott Lake. Opportunity to tie it up. Certainly you can't ask for a closer match than this, Joey. Certainly not, Bob. It's starting to become anticlimactic now, I think, with all these it's monotony setting in here. Uh, but uh, no, as I said before, it was a great final. And uh, sooner or later, we're gonna have a winner, I guess. Well, I think it's Gordon Robertson who uh, played at the back for Elliott Lake. Did an excellent job as fullback. Clearing the ball, making those uh, long passes. And it's in, up high again, 6-6. Six, six. And we're going to reverse something we saw a little earlier. This time it'll be keeper Marino Scarcelloni shooting on keeper Nick Paparo. Talk about pressure, Bob. First you got to stop him, then you got to score him. <laughs> That's right. And if I remember, Marino has a philosophy about, about penalty shots, and that is when you're taking them, Try and part the keeper's hair. So if the keeper's going to move, and they normally do, you're right down the middle of the net, and you're going to score. And it's a three-pointer. Doesn't count. And so it is an opportunity here for Elliott Lake to win this game. All they have to do is... Right, and now, now he's got to get in that net, regain his confidence, and... Uh, or morale and uh, and try and stop this one. So, Tough situation to be in, Bob. And here's one of the, uh, I think, elder or senior players, more experienced players for Elliott Lake United, Duhame, who uh, I can recall playing in Ontario Cup matches against uh, Sudbury team four years ago in Elliott Lake. I think in those days it was called Elliott Lake Panel United. And he was playing fullback then and played very well, a very strong player physically. And uh, so, well, uh, they say old soccer players never die, Bob. They just play on the old timers team. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not that old, I guess, but uh, certainly been a strong player all season with a chance. And Scarcelloni makes the save. So we're still tied at 6 6. 
Well, there you go. That just goes to show you what type of character Scarcelloni is. After missing a shot and being down and, uh, de you know, uh, dejected about missing it, he gets in the net and comes up with a great save. Again, he guessed uh, going to the uh, left, left side, and uh, he guessed right. This is one of my uh, favorite players and favorite people, Dino Cacciotti, who has been around, I guess, uh, quite a while. Uh, tough little right. As long as we right have full, tonight, <laughs> right fullback. Yes, Dino. Dino's a real workhorse out there. And he puts it wide. Elliot Lake again with an opportunity to win this game. Well, uh, unfortunately for Dino, I don't think he's been in the situation where it's come down to him taking penalty shots too often, Bob. So he, I don't think he's accustomed to it as, as some of the other players are. And uh, like I said, it's a pressure situation. And if you haven't done it a few times before, it's, it, it's not easy to handle. No question about that as Hammond comes forward, uh, checking the ball. It's on the spot the way he wants it. Under the uh, watchful gaze of the referee, Pietro. D'Angelo and taking his time. Scarcelloni getting himself into position. Here we go. With the shot, and it's a goal, and Elliot Lake wins the Dieter Alisad Tournament Championship. 7-6 in penalty shots. And so our congratulations to Elliot Lake and to Pat Marios for an excellent, uh, entertaining match. And on behalf of Joey Presta, I'd like to thank all of the fans for watching this exciting game, and I'd like to thank... TV7 for its support of senior men's soccer over the season. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we look forward to bringing more soccer action to you next season. I'm Bob Segsworth, bidding you all a pleasant good evening.